All right, let's get started. We got a lot to talk about today, guys. Um, welcome back to the UN podcast, everybody. Today we have a lot of regions represented. We've got North America, we've got EU, we've got MENA, we've got Asia, um, and we've got Korea, of course. Um, here with Yam Yam, we have all the chats ready to go, so uh, you don't have to watch it through my stream necessarily. You can watch it through any of your favorite streamers. Uh, will work, and it will go up on YouTube as well. Um, so just make sure that, you know, if you have an opinion, participate in the polls, um, make sure you comment on the video. Um, yeah, because the developers, uh, I know for a fact, uh, like to look at this kind of feedback because, uh, they get a lot of different regions feedback at the same time. So we're here to discuss, there are some pretty big changes, uh, coming to the game. Uh, and we are here to discuss them. The first one that we should probably discuss, uh, are the node war changes. Now I will say there's a lot of us here today. So I'm going to ask that, um, when you're talking, you don't talk for more than about two minutes at the maximum before you let somebody else kind of jump in and say something. Cause like, I know we all have a lot to say, but <clears throat> can die. Have... <laughs> I know I talked to you earlier about it, but like, like if you have like a huge document i know that hopefully we can kind of boil it down oh, um boy. to like a reasonable you know two minute intervals and then we can discuss it and stuff uh we definitely want to make sure that uh everybody kind of gets heard uh and everybody feels like they, it's more of a discussion uh and less rambling so in this case let's start off with the node war changes i would like to know what each region kind of feels about the node wars uh initially uh we will start with Jason, because um, EU is the best region. Uh, so, Jason, why don't you uh, go ahead first? Base tick. Um, mm -hmm. So, both from my personal opinion and speaking with the leaderships of like the the largest four, five, six skills on on, on the server that do uncapped usually, uh, the situation is rather bad. <laughs> it's it's highly disliked. There's a lot of mechanics that need to be reworked in our opinion, and uh, I'm. To boil it down to the to, to the base level of the situation, if there is no at least acknowledgement of PA within the next 14 days, we will probably lose four out of our five biggest siege guilds, and we will have the same situation that KR has, where there's only one guild left in on tier three. Oh boy. Um, um, okay. Is there something that they're they're particularly before we dive into it? Just something particularly that they don't like so much about it. Uh, the the biggest thing that needs to be changed in some way is the like an anti-snipe mechanic or something snipe forts artificially inflate the amount of forts and therefore there is no need for a fight happening usually most uncapped mm. wars so far there was like let's say three pv like three node war siege guilds and then there was like at least three other snipes so there was just three forts every guild takes one fort afks 50 minutes wars over because there's no generated fight based on the system because the art like fort number gets artificially inflated um the last mechanic is highly disliked by a lot of people as well because there's no like the first 50 minutes of the fight or whatever um you can just two minutes before the end you can just take it okay yeah, you're talking about um, the last hit mechanic you mean last person that hits the fort gets the fort well the fact that the first 59 minutes don't matter if you take the fort like one minute before the end you win uh okay so eu dislike got all right so overall you have you heard anybody that like likes the node war changes on you i imagine that there are some what would you think the ratio kind of is uh between the guilds because i know that eu i got i broadcasted the um the eu node war protest um and there were a lot of guilds there so like how many like what do you think the ratio is that people you know like to dislike ratio percentage wise I would say at best five percent like it. At at the very what? best five to ninety five. I think there's maybe one or two guilds that like it. I'm gonna be honest. At, like PvP guilds. There, there's PvE and Lysky guilds, yes, I I sure. But they openly admit that they are there for the participation rewards and not for the fight. PvP guilds, it's like five percent or ten percent at best. At the very okay. best. Okay. Yeah, 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 I mean it makes sense. Um okay, uh let's ask Kendaya. Kendaya, um you do make kind of a lot of variety content. A lot of your content focuses on, focuses on PvE, but you certainly are very knowledgeable on PvP. Uh, I assume you've been kind of talking with some of the major PvP guilds uh, and stuff in your community. How do you think Mina feels about the changes? Hello. Yeah, I talk with many guild masters in my server, and they just share their thoughts. And overall, what they like, they like the no politics part. They like this randomness part. Overall, they like like maybe 20, 30% part of this Node War system. 
but 70% of the pod they dislike and they also share their thoughts about for example for the snap nodes i saw a suggestion there should be minimum for every region there should be minimum participant rules for example let's say that i want to fight at balanus at least 10 people should just click that participate button then guild will be able to just participate if they just go as a snipe then they will get punished after the report or some kind of system then they will stop that uh, snipe system because jason said that there's there's there are snipes snipe goes just making the situation so you know monotone yeah that's what i'm thinking and overall as i said what people think the idea is okay good but there are many missing parts and those missing parts are making problems and if pa actually listens the community about all of these problems i think we can make this content playable reachable achievable mm -hmm. okay um mm -hmm. all right well, a little, little bit more positive there that's good um now we have a new person on the podcast today his name is ham 454 a lot of people know ham from north america um because he is pretty widely considered to be the best large-scale PvPer in the game worldwide. He basically top frags in every single North American guild and every guild on Asia. Uh, he primarily plays on Asia, uh, but again, he has North American accounts. He probably has EU accounts too. Ham is joining us today to kind of give his thoughts on what Asia thinks about the node war changes and then his own thoughts, because uh, I do feel someone with Ham's expertise um, definitely matters. Uh, his opinion definitely matters here. Ham, how do you feel like Asia has been kind of receiving the node war changes? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak completely frank with you. Okay. It is trash. AFK node wars. It is so bad, man. Like, I talked to... Uh, I have I, one of my friends about it. He went in and he was like, Bro, we're AFKing for 20 minutes. And then the war is just over. Like, what? Like, what is the system? We're not PvPing here, we're AFKing for rewards! We literally vlog it, wait bro, we literally tabbed out mid-war and played TFT. Like, what? This is not, this is not Node Wars! This is, what is this? It, yeah. It's not, it's nothing. It, that is, that is the reality of the system. It is trash. The uh, only good thing, I think that like, <laughs> I've heard from a lot of people on uh, multiple regions, the only good thing is that it's, the queue that you can queue up on system because i for for some uh for some context on what happens on the uh, asia system uh, asia node war um nova system there's three mega alliances which has got effectively what was happening before was if you weren't in one of those mega alliances and if you didn't drop with your mega alliance on the same node you'd get barred from pvp for the week so what what you had to do is you had to drop with your alliance which is five side six man alliance otherwise you're barred so the one thing this is doing that is well, uh, that is good, is the fact you can pick your no uh, pick the nodes, and you can like, you can queue effectively, right? And you get some like we had we the the funny thing is it's still happening. Like there's still big alliances they queue up for, they queue up for all of the same nodes or somewhat. Um, and what ended up happening this week is there's a few fights that was ended up being like five v twos or five v threes. But hey, at least that's like. That's okay if it's a 5v2. But you know what's not okay? Is if you just AFK at a node and you don't get PvP. Like, what are you supposed to do? Like, it, like you just tab it out, man. It's, it's not, this is not a game. It's like, I, I am legitimately debating whether I should actually log into the game and play and like go to these node wars because all it, all it is is just, oh, I get, I get, what, a bill for 20 minutes? It's the only good part about it. So. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, overall, Ham, what would you say like is the reception? That's kind of your reception. What do you think is the reception of kind of the rest of the guilds um, that you play with in Asia? Like, what do you think that the like, do you think the super alliances actually like it? I've heard some reasonable positive feedback from Asia. Some people in Asia te technically like it. What would you say the like dislike ratio is? Okay, it's <laughs> I don't know. I haven't I haven't speak to a single person in Asia that actually liked it. Um, I I think. The only people I've heard that actually kind of like it over every everywhere I've I've played is the tier one NA scene. I've heard that may like it, but nobody else has told me they've liked it. 
The, that is it. The only thing we like that that people actually like is the fact you can queue into nodes, uh, queue into uh, different nodes, and you don't have to like figure out where the PVP is, quote unquote. Although you're fighting sticks half the war and you're AFKing at your base, so like if that's right. PVP, I don't well, know what to say. Yeah, well, if the in it, if the T1 seem like that, that's at least a fair amount of guilds um, overall. But like, I, I'm assuming uh, not the in entire. NA. Um, oh, you I mean I, only in NA. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I can't speak exactly on because like. Frankly, the tier one scene is kind of dead in Asia. Like, there's only like five or like five or so guilds on the tier one on the really? thirty men's. A lot, uh, most wow. of the like majority of the guilds um over the last two weeks have been placing on the uncapped fights. Like the uncapped hit were like pat. Wow, what the hell? Both, both Kama and Calfion were pretty packed for like two or three days, four days, and then the. The Medea one was pa uh, like had a little guilds. I think there were, might be one day where the tier one actually had more than like five or six guilds, but I wasn't really paying attention. I, I think I, I streamed every day that I actually had a fight or a quote unquote fight. <laughs> like I had thoughts, I had thoughts to fight. <laughs> oh but, my yeah. goodness. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's good to know. Okay. C Zane. C Zane, I'm going to let mm, you. Yep. You're going to be kind of a, yeah. now you have yeah. kind of a hot take here. So C Zane really likes uh, the known or changes from my, my understanding is, but like mm. C Zane, you're a little bit more connected with the scene nowadays than I am. <laughs> what would you say is the overall reception in North America to the known war changes? Okay. Okay. So corrupt, listen from corrupt side, we've had nothing but bangers. Okay. I'm not gonna lie to you. Mm -hmm. Every fight corrupt has had, it's been so fun. And majority of our time, our guild mates like it. The only time they didn't like is when we dropped on a 50 man. Cause we have like, we're over signing up like a ton, like by 40. It's actually crazy. I don't know how many people, everybody, we find money. Everybody wants to just come PVP all of a sudden. We've only had a couple of times where I've seen like, cause I, the first couple of days I was watching Jason, right? I was watching the EU scene, watching Jason and a couple other people. Mm -hmm. And I saw that, that they were getting a lot of people AFK and we didn't have any of that in it. I didn't hear anything about it. <clears throat> But every fight has been really fun. I think the fast pace makes you feel like you have to move faster, even though you have to set up for like the first like 10 to 15 minutes on a flag. Like we had that one fight that a lot of people watched when it was Digi, Cho, and Corrupt on that comma node. That would have never happened with the old system. Never. In, in, mm. in every, any scenario at all. And I think that was probably like the most like, I don't know, anticipated fight I wanted out of all this entire system. And the reason I like it so much is because I'm trying to make the best out of what we have, right? Is because I know that they're not going to come up with the, they're not going to revert or anything like that because they're tired of the player-based, the player-driven, like, Nodor system. So they want to revert it to what it is right now instead of reverting back to old days. But, I mean, I like the titles too. The titles are pretty cool, you know? If they wanted to do the old one? system and then... Yeah, of every war. Every war. I'm, I'm a top frogger, so yes. Yes, I, I guess I have titles. Yes, well, they're they're super cool. Okay, I've been in I've been in I've been in T ones. Right. I was in T ones on Friday. That was pretty cool. I was in T threes, and I've done uncapped almost every day. Yeah, I'm uh, so. I top frag in our guild every once in a while too, but uh, we get nowhere near. Um, we get absolutely get no titles. Nowhere <laughs> near the like titles. Are the best. Yeah. Okay. So, C Zane, what would you say the overall reception is? Outside of corrupt and, and like overall, what percent of the NA, North, North American node war scene likes the changes? I'd say it's pretty split. I don't think it's like, I don't think it's too overly to the other side. I do think a lot of people hate it, but I think they're hating it for the wrong reasons. I think a lot of people hate it because you're, you're hoping that they revert it to old ways instead of hate, like appreciating what this new system has and the upgrades the system has instead of just like completely shitting on it like a lot of people are. Because if you compare it to the other system, sure, if you look at it from like a front side point of view that you can look at the old system was just better, right? But then you look at like the positive fight this this new Noah system has, right? Where before you'd have a fight on Sunday and it'd just be snipes and you'd have nothing. Or you get the occasional, oh, I found this guild on Sunday and then we have something. And then you hope to pray that you get two fights throughout the week. But now I could fight every day. And in NA, thankfully, we have a lot of guilds placing on T1s, on the 50 man. Uncapped slowly dying, like it was just Cho and us today on the Uncapped, unfortunately. But other than that, every day has been really fun, and we've had multiple fights every day. And the the money's good, of course, obviously, right? And I think that's a big plus from the other one because Nodor is really expensive. I don't know how many other people agree with that, but it's it's kind of ridiculous popping deep seas and elixirs every life. We yeah. do it anyways because we love it. Yeah. Um. So I mean, don't you think it's kind of a bad sign that Uncapped is already dead, and we're not even a week into the changes? Or I guess we're I just don't like think a it's little... dead because. So I don't think it's dead because we're a weekend. I think people are just trying other caps. I don't think it's dead for any specific reason. I think maybe like some guilds are 
were tired of getting just ran over by Cho. Um, because a lot of guilds can't keep compete with Cho. It was kind of like the issue before, right? Um, that was Uncap wasn't like super alive before, anyways. So it's because the gear gap is pretty like huge. But yeah. Okay. Um, I'll be honest with you. M the majority of the feedback that I have received from North American players, and believe me, I have been getting a massive amount of feedback, whether it be through DMs, reading forum posts, um, and like my, gen my general stream chat and everything. The vast majority of the um, the feedback that I receive is this like, I would say that maybe five to 10% of the feedback that I have received has been like, yeah, we really like the changes and we think that it can work. Um, so like, if I combine this with Cezanne's, like, like Cezanne, you think it's a 50-50 split, right? Um, I didn't, I don't know what the exact number is. I know there's a lot yes. of people that don't like it, but I think they dislike it because they're comparing right. it to the other system. All right, I'm going to 70-30. Um, I'm going to 70-30. That's, that's, that's not even that's that bad. Yeah, not I even think that that's bad. fair. I think that's fair. Um, I would say that it's probably more than 70-30, but like, I'm going to be generous. I'm going to say that 70% dislike and 30% uh, actually do like the new node war changes in North America. Can you ask Yambyam what the general reception has, has been mm. to the new node war system? What percentage of his node war scene feels like they like mm -hmm. it? And what percentage of the eight people that do node wars in Korea actually dislike it? Yep. So he preemptively sent me some of his opinions while I was translating to him on Discord DMs. So I'll give him some. He's still editing. He, he deleted them. So I'll say the first part was uh, he says, I don't see it in a negative way. This is fun in its own way. In the KR server, uh, the T2 to T3 war guilds don't like it. However, he thinks overall it's a 50 50 split. And Yambiam, we got two guys. So, first, I'm going to go back to the message. Oh, yeah. 이거 그대로 그냥 말씀 드려도 될것 아, 같은데요. 그대로요? 오케이. 어. 잠깐만요. 이상해. Okay, so he likes it because in the T War scene, uh, there's like 25 plus guilds that are actually participating now, and you get to f you get to fight a lot. So it's like high octane, non-stop fighting. He likes that part too. Um, as I said, uh, the T Two and T Three guilds don't like it. Uh, he plays his five to five split. Okay, so yeah, the hardcore PPers definitely don't like it in KR. Um, he thinks there's so many improvements that need to be made because it's a new system. He thinks the issues would the issues that he wants to touch on would be the last hitting. Um, he thinks that's a huge issue. Uh, you don't have some. Sorry, I'm just reading through it. That's okay. Uh, you guys should run a poll in your chats and tell me what your poll is. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he thinks that um, compared to the preparation times, or no, play time, sorry. Compared to the play time, he thinks Chat, the vote. like f flame towers and watches are way too tanky because the war is so short now. So that's definitely a big issue. Um, he thinks that Musa, Mewa, Kunoichi, and Ninja, and uh, etc. Uh, special classes lost their roles. So I think he's talking about like rat classes mm -hmm. mainly. Um, and he thinks that the strategy was taken away too much. The strategy aspect of the war. And that's uh, it from KR. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. And I've been translating right. everything you guys have been saying, like, real time through DMs. And he's showing it to his chat, so yeah. Yeah, you're good. Um, yeah, guys, you can run polls <clears> and stuff so that we can kind of see and, like, share the results with us so that we can kind of see uh, what the reception is um, to mm. the Node War system kind of overall. Um uh, okay, now we're going to get into the, the nitty-gritty specifics of why people uh, might like... Okay, what are the things that we like about the new Node War system? Jason, is there any redeeming qualities about the new Node War system, in your opinion? Uh, yes, there is. And to, to quickly mention a lot of things, or like a lot of hate that I'm getting from the chat right now, I'm judging the current state of the system, uh -huh, not the potential right. it has, or what it Correct. could be with changes. Yes. The current implemented system we've played for the last week. Uh huh. That one have I judged. Not okay. what it can be. There's gotcha. feedback we can give, and then it can be nice. Okay. Um, positives. Um, the rewards are good. I've even heard people say it's too good, honestly. I've heard some people say argue that they are don't, too good, especially the participation rewards. Don't say that out loud. Rewards are good. Yeah, don't. 
The rewards are great. Do not player, nerf okay? the Cut rewards. Cut that out on your YouTube video, please. Please edit that out. Thank you. I, I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just forwarding. Okay. I want. This not my personal take. It's kick on my stick. Okay. Um. I mean, there's nice mechanics like the Q system. I think is <laughs> liked by a lot of people. Even though we need to talk about the region split later on. Um, the horse revive function is nice, like the titles and stuff, right? But I think the majority of good parts about it are not tied to the new system. Like, you, you can add a horse revive whenever. You could have just added that to the old one. You, you, you could have made new titles and better rewards for the old one and shit, right? I think the only good part that is genuinely tied to the new system is, like, the entry barrier for tier 1 is very, very low. It's very easy. Like, for tier 1, it's... Mm -hmm. a nice system for people to get into because you have basically no entry level right like you can just click on it and you're in you can find which is really really good okay but that's the only positives i think i've heard from the most people um yeah no i mean like i ran a poll in my chat um and of the poll in my chat it said 57 percent of people like it uh at least in my chat yeah. um yeah oh my god okay so um, yeah, I mean, we might roll back more towards, like, a 50-50 like-dislike for, uh, NA, and I'll be honest with you, these are probably mainly EU viewers, um, but, like, uh, I think the hardcore PvPers don't like it very much, um, but, yeah, that's good feedback, Jason, uh, let's see, C Zane, I know you love the new system, what parts are you loving yeah. so much about it? <clears throat> the constant fights, corrupt, I th that's what I'm saying, I think corrupt is, I think I've, maybe I've just been too babied and corrupt. Because corrupt, we don't really like people AFK on us. We go to them. I'm not gonna lie. We we don't really care about the forts as much. We kind of get them anyways, but we kind of bring the fights to them. As I said before, more fights on days like Sunday. Before politicking, it would kind of fall through, and we wouldn't get fights every day, two to three days, because some people just didn't want to fight us, or we couldn't get incorporated in the fight, or digital want to place, or choke it in place because of castle. Um, I think I don't know. There's a lot of good. I think it's more RBF based. I do think the last hitting kind of sucks, but. Um, that's just a part of the negatives. Those, I think, there's just some positives. I think Jason said most of them. I don't really need to add anymore. Okay. Yep. Um, can uh, Ham? Is there anything you like about the new Node War system? Oh, is there, dude? I'm, I'm really, I'm really struggling here. Mm -hmm. Um, like, I, I like that you can own a castle and you can Node War every day. You don't have to politic as much. Those. That's cool, I guess. Okay. Um. You don't get locked out by a five man alliance or six man alliance. That's cool. Um, but like, I, you know what I, I can, I can tell you what the one, I think the thing I'm trying to like understand where Cezanne's coming from. Like I'm really am, but like half of the fights, like I was, I was in the NA fight. That was the best possible thing the system has to offer. And it's a one hour fight. That's it. That's, that's it. Whereas, like, majority of the fights we have, or I've had on Asia, like, like, like four or five out of, like, however many I've been in now, um, it's, like, these Valencia, the Valencia node spawns so, so bad, and, like, there's, and, like, half the time you're on one side of the map, oh, your horse dies, oh, you don't have a pearl item to give you, or a loyalty item to revive your horse, oh, you don't have a sentry, uh, you don't have a map. You have to run to the other side of the node. What, what are you supposed to like? Like, what are you supposed to do? And then, and then it's like, oh, you get wiped. Like, as a middle tier guild, you get wiped on a guild. You don't have a flag. What are you supposed to do? You're running to the other side of the. You're you're spawning town. You have to run all the way up. If you're an unorganized guild, which is majority of middle tier guilds, are um, they spend like five minutes trying to regroup. The war's over in 10 minutes for half half the time, or 20 minutes if it's only if there's only two forts on the note. Like, you know, it's I, I'm really struggling. I, I don't I, I genuinely what? don't know how mm -mm. to get consistent PvP. This is like to me, this is the least amount. There's one node. There's one node which I got a fight for 10 minutes. Or I at the end of the last little bit, it was 10 minutes where it was like, oh, this is a banger. I could see the potential of the fight, but the rest of it, it's like, uh Okay. I don't know. Gotcha. Okay. It's, it's just the less politics. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Prob that's probably right. the only, only thing I have. Okay. Gendaya, what do you see uh, potential wise yeah. out of the new Node Wars? What do you think people like about it? Yeah. Overall, uh, as I said, like 30% of the part, they liked it. And I can say that we need to be constructive at this part. If we just. Uh, well, we are. Be negative nonstop. 
and uh, it, it will not save the day. So I'll just share my thoughts, not only my thoughts, these are the good master's thoughts. Reducing the number of the participants alleviated the pressure on the many players and the group management. This is amazing. Removing the recovery centers has eliminated the logic of the rapid respawning uh, and constantly dying and the grief. This eventually leads to players spawning later. As a result, players play more cautiously, thus enhancing the quality of PvP. This is also good. And eliminating the war logic playing the griefing structure is... This is also good. Overall, we like the non-politics or prevent the politics or make it less is good. And the preparation, uh, the node war phase, such as getting up the fortress, determining the node war, conveying the necessary strategies to the players, and it's good. One click type of node war is good and it just reduces the pressure on the group management and the players. They only can now, mostly, can easily focus on the new node war system. Overall, these are the po positive things that comes from server Mina. Uh, people like this part. And there are also negative things and there are also bad things about this thing. Uh, I want to just share when we not like something, we should also recommend advice to PA. We should, we can change it like this, 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 this. And uh, be positive, being positive and constructive will make this node war system better. That's what I believe. If PA won't listen to us, I will be the most toxic one on my streams. I, I swear. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, that's fair. Yeah, no, um, no, I agree. That's good feedback. I think uh, most of that is covered kind of uh, in what we have here. Thank you, Kendaya. Uh, and Yam Yam, what does Yam Yam think that in KR, what do they like uh, about it? Like, what are the positives? Yam Yam, what do you say? Oh,是。好，是。这个，我们今天，我们今天，我们今天，我们今天，我们今天，我们今天，我们今天，我们今天，我们今天，我们今天，我们今天，我们今天，我们今天，我们今天，我们今天，我们今天，我们今天，我们
kind of uh, you, you've basically not had a bad fight for the most part yet uh in yeah. the system so what are you disliking about um the fight so far um i have a decent amount i think a, a big one that somebody mm -hmm. said it was like the imp, like you being able to get into ones easier, right? Or get into numbers easier. I think a big issue is you're going to get into siege. It's going to be very hard for you to like get into siege because the difference between nowhere and siege now is like a huge gap compared to like the old system. Because even before in the old system, the the nowhere system before was like still a huge gap between like siege and nowhere was two different things, right? But now you have like no mm -hmm. fundamentals with it. So I think it's even harder to like get into it um i don't like how it randomly ends like the question mark thing ends at like 53 i hate that it kind of it kind of triggers me a little bit i wish it would be like 55 or xx00 would be cool um and i another thing is i want is uh make make one hour node per well, drop no matter what i think what, that's a that's a was, kind of a negative hold on what was the, that the it's, you just talked about the question mark thing when you said something about 53, yeah like the, what is that the question mark nodes should mm -hmm. not end at xx53 i think well, it should be xx55 or xx00 i hate it well they kind of end at random times that's the whole point of the question mark yeah i kind of yeah i hate that how about that i hate it you don't like it. the question mark forts i like the question mark forts i just don't like that it ends at 53 okay like the other day with the cho digi thing we were getting all pumped to go push oh, and then all pissed. of a sudden yeah, you're pissed yeah, it you're just pissed. went away yeah, and yeah, the cho nation won yeah, yeah, as soon as they got it for the first yeah. time it's almost like you shouldn't have just been sitting there with your dick in your hand for like we were, 53 we were minutes fighting. yeah we were fighting yeah it sounds like a good, good situation we were fighting we yeah. were fight. um i don't like how you can see you on top of sticks i hate it um i also don't like <laughs> I mean, people talk about the AFK guild thing. I don't know how you fix it. I'd love for people to, uh, and I don't know. I don't know how you fix it. I think it sucks. I think that's like a big thing that really sucks with it is there's, I don't really know how you fix it. If the people AFKing or the people that just snipe. Luckily, mm -hmm. I don't think NA has had much of those as far as I know. That we haven't had really much sniper snipe guilds besides Snake's new alliance. Mm -hmm. They're like the only one that doesn't really do anything. Um, as for Snake's it, really I never done I, anything, so. Yeah, true. I mean, yeah, I I didn't say it. They're kind of ass. Uh, too short. It maybe increase all the time by ten minutes, but I think people like the ten minutes. So I don't know. That's pretty much all the negatives I have. There's there's I have like a list, but it's it's whatever. Good. Okay. Um. So yeah, this the sniping uh snipe guilds. Okay. Now I'm gonna get the contrast of it, Jason. I'm sure that you have a laundry list of things uh that EU does not like about the new Node War systems. All right, let's let's lay them out, buddy. What are the big points here? What are the big things? Um, before I go through it, do we already talk about improvement ideas here, or just straight up no, negative no, no, this first, is just and then what later you dislike, on improvement ideas? And then what we're gonna, and then we'll talk about improvement ideas. All right, okay. So um, I have a tier one specific because uh, luckily computer, big shout out to him, um, hosted a podcast for like the tier one girls and stuff. Um. So there's a what, tier 1 specific that doesn't apply to tier 2 and tier 3 currently uh, because there's simply not enough guilds. Tier 1 usually has like 15 guilds plus uh, or like 15 guilds attending on Balenos and Serendia. And there is the issue that towards the end when there's only four, one fort remaining, you just have a 7v1 going on, which is unplayable. It, it, it's not playable. Mm. Eight guilds for one fort you can't play. It, it's not fun for any of the eight guilds. It's just a random body throw. FPS, lag, is, it's non-existent, it doesn't work. Like, just bad, straight up. Last 10 minutes of tier 1, unplayable. Um, so for the rest of the caps, um, the biggest issue by far I think everyone has can agree on is that sniping ruins the system. Artificially inflated fort numbers, there's no reason to fight on tier 3 currently, there's no point, you have two PvP guilds for two forts, you take your fort, you AFK maybe around a little bit, hit some people in the back and stuff, right? But in the end, all PvP guilds will always win a fort because of sniping. Needs to be somehow done about it. Can, we can talk like later about what you can do. Mm -hmm. um, the, the last sitting mechanic, as mentioned before already, it, it ruins both for tier 1 and for like higher tiers. You can hold your fort for 45 minutes. If it ended at 46 and you lose it for 10 seconds, you lose the fight. It's like, yes, in the end, it's like, whatever, I guess, right? But it's, it's just a bad feeling, right? Imagine you hold your fort for 46 minutes and then you lose it for 10 seconds and the timer runs out and you don't even know or the other guild knows specifically and gets the last hit there, it's the worst feeling in the game, bro. You, you want every single push, they just buddy threw it down, like, until it actually went down, and then they win it. Kind of sucks. Okay. Um, the, the, the fact that fights can potentially end at, like, 20 minutes already, right? Like, the question mark for it is good by itself, that you don't know a timer. 
but the time should be at least increased to like 30 40 minutes or something right because we, we had a 1v1 against orca bros for example or pve alliance recently um is what their name is <clears throat> um it, it's probably the closest fight we can get we are very very close to each other when it comes to strength currently it was a question mark for and then like at xx20 our guilty was like yeah you can pop your, your breaths or something right so we can get the push going because they won the rng hit at the start the fight ended at xx22 well you just had a flex set up you start like two pushes and then a forge disappears that's just bad um currently the the i feel like 43 as well it's basically decided who gets the the, the, the last hit on the first fort if if you get like the the, the first fort right and then like both guilds compete over who gets it because whoever gets the last hit on it is going to get it right if you get that fort you're guaranteed to win that fort it's not going to come down unless there's a massive strength discrepancy to to win a 1v1 currently on this nova system you need to be x amount of time stronger than the other guild currently we have like similar strength in like unpredictable the pve alliance so orca bros for the people that don't know and opposite we're, we're somewhat close to each other right like the fight would last a decent amount on siege it's not possible to win it if whoever has that fort is going to win that fort you can't take it down in 20 or 30 minutes not happening in a 1v1 that is mm -hmm. okay um i think that touches on Most the biggest yeah. four five biggest points problem. i would say is currently sweet good job all right are, like really bad um right on ham what are your biggest grievances well first of all i want to say like i'm sorry if i'm a bit like loud about this because i i'm extremely passionate about well, that's why you're here it's like you're, yeah, you're it's like, the main reason I play the game. You're a good right? representation like, of like that's, literally that's players like genuinely that just the main reason. log in um, to play Node Wars, right? Like that's like the hardcore people. Uh, well, right? I, I I can't really do with ping. I can't really do much other content in the game. Like, right. It's kind of a joke. But um, anyway, what I dislike, the main things like genuinely, like the genuinely the main problem, I think, is the fact that like, it should be 30 minutes late. It, like, the forts or the nodes, there should not be a single fort under 30 minutes. I, uh, saying it. I don't think, I don't think 10 minute forts should be a, a thing. I don't think 20 minute forts should be a thing. It's just, uh, like, that's, it shouldn't be a thing. Um, and an hour max, I, this is a little bit more controversial. Like, I'm not sure if I'm the only person that feels like this. I've heard a lot of other people do feel this way, but like one hour max seems really grief. Like I, I think I think it needs to be more than one hour. Um, the other really big problem with uh, Node Wars is um, mm. the spawns in some of these regions are extremely bad. Like Valencia is borderline unplayable right now with the spawns. Like you have to run from Ari if you don't have a uni, you have to run from Arihaza. Uh, Valencia, it's, what was it? Ar Arihaza, Valencia, or the Harbor, right? That's the three spawns, if you don't have a flag. So it's really bad on some of these regions. Um, and like, also, like, if you don't have a uni and you're doing Medea, Medea, Valencia, you need a uni. Like, it's mandatory at this point. It's, it is very unfun to play. Um, I, I would say that, and the, the other thing that's really, concerning to me is because now node wars are extremely different from what siege is like there is well i think we'll see especially if we have the system for a long time we're going to see a massive like uh, a massive gap between guilds that try to push the siege because because like the, there's going to be insane knowledge gap between siege guilds uh, being and siege guilds and node guilds because just node wars are so different to uh siege now so uh and I feel like Node Wars are very dumbed down right now with, like, it's literally, like, someone said it before, it's an RBF. Like, it's literally, quite literally, you go to a fort, you RBF on the fort, you try to last at the fort, that's it. There's very little strategy. There's, I won't say little, but there's very minimum strategy that goes into, there is some, but, like, there is very minimum, especially compared to the old system. And that's, like, would be the main reasons um, I don't like the new Node Wars system. Uh, okay. Along other things, but those are the big ones for sure. Right on. Okay. Yeah. No, those mm. are good. Um. Let's see. Did we have we done Kendaya yet? Nope. 
Okay, can Daya go ahead with your dislikes? What are people not liking so much about the Nerdwar system? So overall, the same things I can say, but there are extras. The HP and DP values of structure and the cannons need to be reviewed. Damaging the structure is quite difficult, giving guilds who luckily land the final hit and they get the fort, it's significant advantage. Particularly the structures in Balanos and Serendia regions are extremely strong. The building prices need to be reviewed again uh, because they're expensive. To, to the buildings, the damage caused by the Exilar buildings like Flame Towers and Huachas, they should be eliminated. If a fort is captured, for example, by your guild, the structure of the guild surrounding the fort and losing the fort should be removed. As a result, those who capture the forts cannot even stand in their own areas, constantly getting CC. They cannot even just stay in still, and it's a big problem, and they lost their forts instantly. In 1v1 situation, um, providing certain advantage to the attacking guilds can be considered. It's because whenever you get a node, whenever you get a fort, the defense, I mean, being defensive, I mean, Defensive mode is so easy, attacking mode is a little bit a problem right now. It's almost like impossible for two guilds with equal conditions to capture a fort from the other one. Those are the things because there are many other um, negative things that they shared with the uh, advices and recommendations, but uh, the uh, Mi Amigos already told them. Okay. Um, mm. Right on. Um, what does Yam Yam not like so much about it? Yam Yam Nim. Uh... Uh, 단점, 단점, 네. <웃음> 단점, 지금, the other Asia streamers couldn't make it, so we have him here. 아. 반면 그 물음표 이제 랜덤 성체라고 그러죠. 종료 시간이 랜덤인 성체는 이제 물음표 언제 끝날지 모른다는 특성상 사람들을 막 쫄리고 긴장되게 만들어서 계속 성체를 공격 공격하게 유도돼요. 그래서 음. 이런 특성 좀 섞어서 20분에 종료되는 성체를 10분에서 20분 사이에 랜덤 종료 이런 식으로 구간 랜덤 종료 이런 걸 추가해줬으면 좋겠어요. 그거 음. 그러면 좀 강타 싸움이 좀 줄어들지 않을까. 그리고 이제 성체를 마지막 타격해서 점령했는데 그 성체의 일정 비율의 데미지를 입히지 못하면 예를 들어 성체의 체력의 10%를 10%만큼 데미지를 못 줬으면 주인 없는 성체로 바뀌게끔 이런 걸 방지하고자 그런 것좀 추가됐으면 좋겠고 그리고 거점 지역 로테이션 맨날 같은 지역 하는 거 질립니다 제발 좀 로테이션 좀 돌려줬으면 좋겠어요 어떤 로테이션이요? 아까... 죄송해요 응? 다시 한번 네? 말씀 주실래요? 다, 방금 그, 하신 말씀 다시 한번만 더 주세요 아, 거점전 지역 로테이션. 아. 네, 맨날 같은 지역 이제 1 1티어는 아, 발레노스 네, 세렌디아 네. 고정인 거 네. 그런 게좀 불만입니다. 그리고 부속 부속은 아까 매나 쪽에서 말씀했다시피 너무 튼튼해요. 거점 진행 시간에 비해 체력이 음. 너무 많습니다. 그래서 오케이. 이것도 좀 손봐야 될것 같아요. 제 의견 여기까지입니다. 일단. 오케이. Okay. So I think that the current meta is basically like. Uh, Baron Smite 50-50, that's the meta. So we're seeing a lot of instances where everyone just kind of looks at each other till the last few minutes and then everyone just goes in to try to hit last hit a node towards the end of the war, he doesn't like that. And he thinks the question mark node, on the other hand, it's unknown, so it kind of pressures people to keep fighting over it because you don't know when it's going to go away. Um, so they should make more nodes that have random timers, he thinks, to kind of encourage fights. So for like the fastest despawning nodes, maybe don't make it 10 minutes, make it anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes. So if you want an early node and leave, you have to keep fighting for it because you don't know when it's disappearing. That's one of his ideas. Uh, he also thinks, I, I think I might have misheard this, but something about uh, if a node only has 10% left, it should be owned by no one. 그, 죄송해요, 한, 그 포인트 중 하나가 10%밖에 안 남았을 때 주인 없애는 거한 번만 더 말씀해 주실래요? 아, 그 이제... 네. 길드가 성체의 체력을 10% 이상 깎지 못하였을 네. 때는 점령이 불가능하게끔 기어도 아 기어도 시스템 okay, 일정 so 기울의 thinks... 데미지를 입히지 못하면 Okay, so he thinks that if if a guild didn't do more than 10% damage to that node, they're not allowed to own it. So let's say like someone another guild did 80% and then another guild came and only did the last 10%, they shouldn't be able to take that. It'll just turn into um, no one owns that node. 
anymore. If a guild that only did a little bit of damage was able to last hit it, they shouldn't get it. Uh, and he thinks that he also thinks that the node war regions they should mix it up a little bit for each tier instead of like T1s always being the same two regions, it gets stale. So he thinks if they could rotate the regions around for each tier, that'd be nice too. And, and then last point is that the structures are too tanky, which I think everyone can agree. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, and that was it. Yep. Okay. Uh, I, I think one big thing that people didn't actually touch on that I think is kind of a big problem is the fact that structures mm. do not despawn when you take a fort. Um, I think Kindia touched on it. Brenda mentioned the... Oh, yeah. did he? Uh, she touched when... on it, yeah. Okay, sorry, I apologize. They I missed it. They should at least pop you out, I think. Yeah, so when when you kill a fort, the enemy guilds, flame mm. towers, and Hawacha are still present, even if you last hit the fort and take it from them, which basically means that they can plant a flag, like, I don't know, 20 meters from their fort, uh, and if their fort goes down, they just spawn outpost and then run back and kill your fort again with the flame towers and the Hawacha spring. So like, mm. and, and anyone that does node wars knows that that kind of a system is just not going to work. It's not healthy. It doesn't work very well. When you lose a fort, your structure should despawn um, and you should basically have to reset. Um, at least your like defensive structures like the flame towers and the Hawachas should have to despawn uh, when you do stuff like that. Um, the rest of this, I completely agree with. I think that it's going to be extremely hard for players to get into siege. Um, I'll add a plus one for that. Um, absolutely. Command to gather on forts, I think is always going to happen, but I think, um, with the system that I'm going to try to propose here in a moment, I think that it, it kind of fixes itself. Snipe guilds ruining the system. There is a screenshot that I want to show, um, to everybody here. Um, oh, that's not what I want to do. See if I can't get it to, there we go. Um, hide all this. Okay, so... On the subject of a snipe guild ruining the system, this mm. says join our coalition of active PVE, life skilled PVE, uh, and PVP guilds to secure participation in node wars for just one second. Exclusive participation rewards, 500 mil silver, <laughs> 10 hour buff scrolls, extra AP against monsters, life skill mastery. Why join our alliance? Plan for awards. We aim to guarantee participation rewards for all slash most guilds evolved, and the coalition, and if the coalition gets big enough, win rewards later on end game vision we're aiming at 34 guilds ensuring at least eight sticks per region even if all the hardcore pvp guilds are placed on one region we would still have two to three nodes to secure rewards no lockout with just 10 active members you won't get locked out of node wars given that your sum of kills death is over 100 um and we'll take a four for one second uh participation war requirements 100 combined kills deaths um and hitting any fort at least once uh once everyone has secured the participation rewards you can either leave or stay for more pvp and a chance to win rewards this alliance is solely to help you secure participation rewards no mandatory attendance gear requirements and such current progress um <laughs> yeah there's four to five big pvx guilds interested so uh essentially what we have going on here at least in north america this might be an eu guild again it's this clip screenshot uh, I'll try to it's move it to the post. side of the screen. Oh, it's an EU post. Um, yes. Okay, so it's an EU uh, screenshot um, of basically they're trying to put together a snipe alliance. And, and as we said before, I actually don't think that this would actually be a particularly bad thing unless they didn't say this. This line right here is pretty egregiously bad. Um, <laughs> if we talk about once everybody's secured their participation awards, you're going to leave. Right. Okay, well, that's bad. Right. I actually don't mind the fact that other guilds are trying to band together to try to secure rewards with each other is totally fine because like they're basically still forced to fight the other guilds. I think that would be fine. But their plan is to literally leave this the moment that they get their participation rewards. I think that's overall kind of a bad thing. Uh, but yeah, snipe, snipe guilds ruin the system because they give more forts than would normally be there. Uh, and it kind of ruins the entire system. And you already see alliances kind of trying to do this. Uh, the mm. fort uh, locations on Valencia, uh, unless you have a unicorn, yes, that's fair, but it's always been that way on Valencia. Like, it's, I, I don't know what the solution is for that, uh, other than to just place everybody at, like, um, sulfur mine, um, and stuff, uh, places that are kind of outside the desert and stuff. Uh, HB on structures and cannons need to be reviewed. Cannons and flags are way too strong. Uh, I, yeah, I think structures overall are just, like, they tick... You know, we did a, the T1 system today. Uh, I fought on two of the three camps 
Uh, and the T1 system, I can tell you right now, it took us over a minute to kill a flag with everyone wailing on it and no one interrupting <laughs> us. It was crazy. Um, so like those so are squish. way, way too strong. Structures are probably too tanky overall. Uh, and again, they need to despawn when you hit a fort. So like, um, yeah, like those are kind of my negatives there. Now we're going to talk about, so like, yeah, there's a laundry list of, of negative things with the new node war system. Loop. Yes. There's some positive stuff as well. Jason, do you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I forgot, I forgot two small things to add to the list before we move to the next topic. Um, if, if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay. Um, so the tier three fort locations, um, like the, the tier, five, tier five node fort locations are always the same, right? Like it's always the same three nodes or something that gets chosen. One of them is going to be the question mark fort. You already know it, right? Mm -hmm. um, for Kalfion, they're really, really shit. One of them is in root remote station, which you basically barely can 2v1. The other one is North Kayamonto, which is on top of a hill, which is shit. And the other one is Trina Fort, which is shit. So all the tier 5 nodes in Kaifeon suck ass, by the way. Um, please change them. Like, they're horrible to play around. This touches a bit on Ham's mentioning of the fort locations being bad. Um, at least for tier 3, that is. The okay. Kaifeon ones, I think, are fine. The, the Kaifeon ones are really, really bad. You don't want to fight them. Um, and on top of that as well, the region split for tier 3, I think, is a very bad mechanic. I don't know how it is for NA, but EU has, like... Four guilds that are like unkept that are really cl somewhat close to each other, and then there's a rather large discrepancy, and then like another three, four guilds come, right? Yeah, we have three, um, and then there's a the massive gap, and then no one can fight the top three. Yeah, that's for us, it's four, and then there's like quite a big gap, and then there's like another three, four that are somewhat mm -hmm. strong, or, like, like towards each other, right? The region split is really up for tier three because it basically always forces like unless the rng is on your side which is like a one in i don't know how much chance right that the four big guilds are going to land on one region and the four slightly weaker guilds are going to land on one region right it forces the huge discrepancy between guilds to fight the super super strong guilds which is just not fun right like if the rank six or seven guilds have to fight the rank one guild it's not fun for any of them right yeah so the region split is a, is a notoriously bad thing where the rank four, five, like four, five, six guilds on EU currently rather go capped, even though they usually would go uncapped, because they will be forced to fight the rank one and rank two guild always, like at least. So the region split is a very bad thing for Europe. Like, yeah. Okay. 14. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I think that overall, like the T uh, worldwide, it sounds like the biggest feedback is that like no one T3 plus and higher really likes the new system very much um there are very specific exceptions to this rule like um corrupt apparently has not had a particularly bad fight i i think honestly if you're a strong guild you love the new node war system um uh worldwide deadage um but like i if you're an extremely powerful guild, yeah, it basically forces other guilds to fight you, and that's probably why you like it so much. Um, but like if you're one of the, like the the mid-tier um or like lower tier guilds, you're probably not gonna like it very much unless you're on the T1 system, in which case there's a lot of forts. Um so like the the mid I, I don't know how it is on your guys' region, but like the mid-tier regions and the I mean like the mid-tier, like the 680 cap and the uncapped is basically already dead. In North America, like the mid tier uh, is like okay. There's like six guilds um, or less, uh, five guilds on each region um, each night. But the problem is that means there's two forts, and you already know how it's going to play out each time. And guilds are just they're already starting to move down to to T1 because like they just they can't compete. It shouldn't split that early. Like the region split shouldn't happen with like four or five guilds only, right? Like maybe at like nine or something, right? But I think. Especially considering that you will always have the same two, three, four locations if it's only like three, four guilds, right? Yeah. There's no need for region split unless you have like at least eight guilds on a region. Like splitting it for five, six guilds is, 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 is stupid. Can I just uh, say opinion. something real quick? Go ahead. Uh, in Asia, uh, uncap's the most alive. Like it's the opposite. Really? Like there's the most guilds or mo uh, majority of the guilds place on un uncapped. Okay, I'll take that out then. Do they um, actually fight though, or yeah, like what, uh, like is it just yeah. a zerg? Well, or it's like, entire, just... like mo it depends on which, okay, because there's alliances, right? Like it depends. It's RNG. This is the good thing about the system, by the way, because there's alliances. You queue up for they all they a lot of them queue up for uncapped, and then they then it, and then it becomes like a four v four v three or something like that on the uncapped region because it, it's it RNGs uh like half the alliance in. 
sometimes it's it's kind of doomed because then you get like their top two, top three, and like the one one at the bottom or like one mid, and then you queue into like two or three from the middle, uh, three like middle guilds from the other alliance that aren't really fight. But it's still a fight, right? It's still PvP, and that's what I think what we like the most about it. But like, um, so like the as I said, the queuing system is the best part of the, the best part of the node in my in, in in at least from my point of view and uh, i think a lot of people from asia would agree with that but because it, it does force fights it forces guilds to somewhat fight other guilds but i said the, the there's other pro the, the other problems with the system right but. yeah um okay so like just to be clear uh in asia there's like super alliances is my understanding of the asia node war scene and they're all dropping on the uncapped and like sometimes you get like four guilds from one super alliance and six guilds from another but at least they're forced to fight each other is that what you're saying pretty much yeah okay um so asia hates each other so fucking much that the system is actually working <laughs> over there that's great um super great uh <laughs> That's, like, like um, that's crazy. Go ahead, Caesar. I do have a question for everybody. Do you guys think with this new system, you think guilds will start getting more comfortable and not want to improve as much due to being able to just get money due to hundred well, percent in the fort? No one, no one is going to want to improve in it. Like, what, what do you, what is there to improve? The only, the only thing to improve is your now gear. Now. Right. That's it. The only thing well, to improve on is your I, gear. I There's no macro anymore. There's no strategy. It's basically you're just running it down RBF style on the enemy guilds. Uh, and that's what a lot of people like about the new system so much is that they've taken mm. out all of the dynamics uh, of the node war system. And that's like largely what people said that they like about the new system. And I said that I personally don't like that about the new system, but I'm a shot caller. I've always been like a shot caller. I love the fact that like there's macro and I can like make some crazy strategies and do some stuff. There's none of that with the new system because there's no structures to kind of work with. There's no... Um, yeah, there's just no strategy at all um, with the new Node War system at all. You can't set up fights or anything either. So, like, all of that's just kind of in the past now. And, you know, I've kind of come to terms with that. But, like, yeah, no, you can't bitch about guilds not being or wanting to get stronger when this is the system. This is all. It's just an RBF. Like, no one's going to want to get stronger. Like, you don't necessarily do RBF with the intent that I want to get good at PvP. Like, you, you do RBF because you're already good at PvP and you want to shit on people that are not as good. Mm. So like, I just uh, also wants to say something about yeah, the because you guys are talking about the snipe issue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sniping has been a huge issue for everyone in Korea, and he seen he thought that this would have brought good changes. But the issue, another issue, rises where like, if there was uh, like one v one v one v one, like four guild situation, it wouldn't be like four guilds having at it. There would be like one v one with two PvP guilds, and then the other two guilds would just be sniping guilds. So that it kind of kills the fights. So he thinks there should be at least like a 60% of the cap of that war should be attending to kind of prevent uh, sniping. Because sniping is apparently still an issue in Korea. Okay, so his proposition nodes. is yeah. that you have to have 60% attendance. 60% yeah. yeah. um, attendance of the total cap for the node war. Yeah. Uh, to mitigate sniping. To yeah. mitigate sniping snipe guilds. That's a reasonable. That's a that's a reasonable improvement. Um, I would agree with that. I'll go ahead and like. Did he have anything else, real quick, or like, can I? Okay. Uh, say... 얌얌님 혹시 그러면 이제 좋은 식으로 개편하는 의견 지금 더 말씀하실래요? 어 개선 점 말씀한 말씀하는 거죠? 아 개선 개편 예 개선 네네 네. 그래서 아까 말 방금 yeah. 말한 주제로는 이제 참여 yeah. 최소 인원. 네, 그 말씀 드렸어요. 서비스는 uh -huh. 거점전을 주력으로 밀고 있으니까 yeah. 어? 그 알바 관련 문제들을 좀 진중하게 좀 다뤄줬으면 좋겠어요 시스템적으로나 yeah. 최소 yeah. 참여인이나 그런 부분으로 그리고 어 다들 얘기해가지고 할게 할 얘기가 없는데 어 오케이 okay. <웃음> 없으면 괜찮아요 그 네. 너무 거점전 너무... 로테이션 이것만 좀 강하게 원하고 있다 전해주세요 여러분. Okay. He wants to say um since PA is really pushing out the Nordwood contents, they should take the issue seriously, especially they should take sniping issues seriously in Node Wars. He really wants to really appeal to PA, please take the sniping issue seriously, make some kind of, you know, like he said, attendance requirement to maybe mitigate the sniping issues. And he wanted to also um, re-emphasize the 
아, 뭐, 다, 다시 한번 말씀 마지막에 뭐라고 하셨죠? 죄송해요. 피곤해가지고. 지형 로테이션. 어떤 oh, 지형? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and another thing he really wants is the rotation of the regions for each tiers, so that it doesn't get stale. So if you're like mainly T ones, you can get other regions too to fight. Okay, the week. yeah. He really wants to iterate that. Yeah. Swing and that's region. it from the for now. Can I, yeah. can I just uh, expand upon a point I made earlier? Real quick? Okay. Yeah. Um, I I am like generally concerned about like guilds. Like, there's going to be a big difference in like, especially if we have the system for like an, a year or so. If the game like yeah. In, anyway, beside that. Um, if we have the system for like a year, uh, the difference between a guild that sieges and a siege guild will be insane in siege. Correct. Like if we have this node war system, like mm -hmm. it's gonna be there's there's already because like as said from Asia point of view, like there is a let's see different alliances. There's a lot of gate kept information. Like it's not like NA where there's uh, information you can just ask people. There's a lot of gate kept information uh, about node wars and sieges and how things work, and you add that to node wars being so vastly different than sieges. There's, we're going to, we'll see a massive decline in like how, like, uh, the quality of, uh, the quality of siege guilds, or guild, it, it won't be siege guilds, it will be guilds that siege, instead right. of siege guilds. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's kind of my, what I was trying to say earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, uh, alright, that, that, good to know, yeah, no, I completely agree, I think the gap is just going to get absolutely massive, but, um, um, I'm not really sure what they do about that since they've chosen to go this way. They might have to change Siege 2, which would be crazy. Um, I but hope not. I hope not, too. I like the strategy that goes into Siege, um, um, as I liked Node War as well. I'll be honest with you. I think that there are two big propositions that I want to give, and then I'm going to look over at the forums as well here. Um, number one, I think that this last hit system kind of sucks, but I think it might be all we have. I've looked at like doing a percent damage to the fort thing, and I think that discourages weaker guilds from trying to get involved uh, in any particular fight, so that won't work. I think that if you're going to have a last hit system on a fort, I think that all forts need to be question marks. Um, they all need to be question marks because I feel like this will prevent a lot of these problems that we see up here, where like you have... Like, the last hit mechanic will feel better because you're not sure when the fort is going to end. This 1v7 zerg that you see at the end of every single um, war won't necessarily... I mean, like, obviously that's going to happen in almost any system, but it won't happen as quickly if all the forts are question marks. The guilds don't actually know when each fort is going to end, so you just have to take a fort and just hold it. Um, and nobody knows when to dive in and, like, make any like make a fight happen. They just have to assume that the fort's going to end soon, so that it, it kind of encourages them to kind of speed up the pace of the fight a little bit and have to fight over the course of the whole node war instead of just waiting for the timer to run out and then just um, trying to zerg it right at the end uh, of the timer. Like, this also might help EU's problem with where they're just kind of sitting around twiddling their thumbs, but I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure that there's really an answer for that. Like, if your guild is really powerful and the other guilds are weak, no one's going to come fight you. And that's just kind of the basis of the new Node Wars system that's kind of miserable. Um, but I think choices suggested on the forum, which we're going to look at, um, might help that a little bit. So I think that all forts need to be question marks. I, all, I also think that um, in order for this system to work on, like, the T3+, plus, so the 680 cap and the uncapped without those two like just dying over the course of time and everyone dropping on the t1 cap um i think that you need to roll back the alliance system i think alliances need to be a hundred cap roll it back um i think that this will overall increase the number of guilds um in like the node war system more guilds mean more forts mean more fights uh overall and i think that if you roll the alliance system back so instead of being 150 man you roll them back to a hundred man cap um i think that the node war scene is better it's better because you have more forts or you you have more guilds more guilds makes the system work as we've seen on balanos and serendia if you have more forts the system act can actually have fun the only people having fun right now are the ones where you have 15 forts sitting uh on a region so if you you can get 10 plus on a region uh, it might work. Uh, another suggestion that I have is um, instead of having two regions for uncapped, uncapped and 680 cap, need only one region. So like 
One day it can be Valencia, the next day it's Medaya. Then then the next day it's Valencia again, and then the next day it's Medaya. Or it's just random either way, I don't care. But like, this will again double the amount of guilds on a region. What, what Jason said earlier, there's just, like, it, the region splits. And then like, there's just not enough guilds to promote a fight because everybody already knows how strong they are on this 680. Um, and in the, especially, particularly in the uncapped, it's not like anyone's going to go try to push Conquer um or the air fort or not like anybody's gonna go try to push joe once they've tried to take in their fort unless they're the last fort left and they feel like they can take it um like with with the help of another guild so like i i don't think that they're gonna do that because um i think this entire system was built on the premise that they don't want alliances forming and they don't want um politics happening and i think that if you only have one region um that guilds can actually drop on, I think it will promote politics and it will promote alliances. So like, I don't think that this is going to work. Um, uh, but like, it is something that I suggested to kind of increase the number of guilds. Overall, I think that alliances being rolled back to a hundred man cap and then all forts being question marked would be a good thing though. Um, but like, I I'm curious what you guys, like Jason, what do you think about that? Um, okay. Um, quickly touching on the thing that you mentioned with like Nugget's gonna be fighting Conquer or something. If there's anti snipe, they will. We've already had it. There was a 2v1 of like, I think it was Revive and Salute or Necrotic and Salute or something against Conquer. And like, yeah, Conquer won the fall in the end and they had it for the majority, but they fought them and they lost the fort for like a, at least two, three minutes, right? So there was actually a fight happening, but this only happens with anti snipe because then you only have one fort for three guilds or like two forts for four guilds. So it creates a dynamic where you're forced to fight but it needs every single attending guild to be a pvp guild willing to fight otherwise there's too many forts we've, we've covered it before but if there's not then you're already like you, you immediately fix the afk issue because people will come to you to fight because well if they want the bag which everybody wants they need to hit your fort and if there's no other fort for them to take if it's like oh yeah okay we can't push them we're just going to take the other fort there is no other fort with anti snipe right they have to come to fight so i think that fixes it by itself as a idea for how to make anti-snipe um yum yum already mentioned it with like the, the the people being signed up at yes i would increase it i think like i personally would have said that 60 out of 75 people for tier 3 would need to be yes up at 1959 otherwise your participation gets retracted otherwise your guild is not signed up straight up like if, if you don't have 60 people signed on yes at 1959 you get the snipe punishment you can't place anymore and your fort doesn't get placed in the first place so it's, it's not like ruined right well, you shouldn't be able to play on tier three. Well, damn, bro. Like, I, I think that, like, honestly, if you have over like the previous cap, so like, I, I don't know. I feel like that might be a little too harsh on guilds. Days. Yeah, like if you're over fifty, yeah, then it would be okay. Because like, if you're fun. if you're not over fifty, then yeah, you're obviously just kind of sniping, right? But like, you know, like, what if a guild just like brings like fifty eight people to a seventy five? I think that's a fair amount of people. That's fine. If I'm being honest. Oh, I think that's okay. not a snipe, I, I, I can live right? Video. Yeah, like even if oh, they okay. brought forty people. You know what I mean? As long as they have over 20 yes up or 30 yes up, it might actually work, right? You're trying to avoid the people that only bring 10 people to a 75 man node war. That's what you're trying to avoid, right? Um, I think that, like, overall, I think that's a good idea, though. Um, uh, Jason, do you have any other, like, proposed improvements for the, the war system here? Uh, yeah, I want to do a plus one on the rotating nodes from MVM. We've asked for that for months. It was one of the initial requests, right? Um, mm. For the question mark fort idea that you had, mm -hmm. I I agree. However, I would say that all forts should be 40 minute plus. I, I don't think that a 10 okay. minute fort is a good thing. Um, should uh, be 40 minute yeah, plus? Yeah, don't split. Yeah, 40. I, I think. I, okay. I don't know, man. Like mm -hmm. 25 minutes or something. It, it's not enough. For, for 1v1 or something, it, it's not enough time. It, it doesn't work. At, unless you are Conquer and the other guild is like the rank five or something mm -hmm. i okay. swear Conca would probably not even be able to take a fort from us in 20 minutes okay yeah uh ham go ahead um oh, oh, okay. oh, sorry ham unmuted um, there ham did you have something to add to that yeah like 30 30 plus 30 to 40 plus like it's and the max cap shouldn't be an hour it should be like an hour and a half two hours like there should be nodes that you can get that are two hours like some of those bank like when you got a good fight going and then it's then it just ends at like 20 minutes 30 minutes or even an, some of these fights when they end at an hour it's so sad man it's so disheartening I don't know. Yeah, like, even with with the old because like it, it in a or in a you didn't have it right 
But Asia and a lot of the other regions had one hour cap on Node Wars. There was a lot of fights when you when it wasn't one of those fights that just ended in five minutes with Invon CTGs, the first two, five minutes of the, the node. Um, it was like a grinder, like, out, like it would go to the hour and I don't know, it was it was just getting close, then it would just end. And it's like, ah, uh, like an hour isn't enough. Some of those, when it's a good fight, man, an hour and a half, two hour banger. I might be alone with that one, but two hour bangers. Nah, dude, those, those are the best fights, man. They're the best. Okay. Um, does everyone, like, C Zane, what do you think about it? Do you think that, uh, like, do you agree overall with this feedback, or is there something you would add? Um, well, I wanted to, before we teared off a little bit, I wanted to get your thoughts on the alliance breaking thing. Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you think about Siege then? Most guilds aren't going to bring a hundred. That's, That's the, the whole point. point of the 150. Uh, I think the entire yeah, point to of siege, siege. To Siege. Yeah, I understand. Siege, I think, mm -hmm. should still be a hundred man cap. And I think that, uh, honestly, the way that Siege used to work in the past for years before they changed the system was that you had 100 people in your guild or you had 100 people in your total alliance. And, like, a big part of your strength at Siege was how many of those 100 people can actually come to Siege. Um, I think that, like, yeah, not everyone's going to be able to pull 100. Uh, but, like, I think that's a big part of a guild's strength is how many people are can you pull to Siege. I think that that's important. Uh, and I think that it's totally okay to keep like a hundred man cap on siege. Now I think there should be at least some PVP in the game that tries to get you to bring as many people to as possible. I think that siege could, should kind of stay stay as it is, in my opinion. What do you think? I like siege the way it is. I don't really like the removal of the alliance system because I think it's. I understand what you're saying with you you make it so you can have more guilds or whatever. I don't think it's like a terrible idea, but maybe do like I don't know if you wanted to like lower the alliance, maybe do like one twenty five or something. I think. 100 people, all 100 people going to Siege is, I don't, I think Cho Nation's probably the only guild that could probably ever do that. I don't think a lot of guilds are doing that ever. Oh, yeah. But, like, I think, again, that's the point, is that, like, if one guild can only pull 70, and the other guild can pull 100, shouldn't, don't you think that, like, that should be, like, part of a guild's overall strength is the activity level of your guild? I think that one guild should be rewarded because their members are more active. It's just kind of how it is. Um, and you can also, yeah, there's mercs, too. Um, if they wanted to do that. Ham, how do you feel about the Alliance system? I've always thought 150, man, is like, bro, if you take 50 gil, like, best case scenario, I'm not saying this is ever going to, like, be a thing, or, like, uh, it's his best case scenario. You take 50 players from all, every, every 150 man Alliance, slap them into other guilds, or, or maybe even slap some of the people, 50 players from Cho, Digi, Corrupt, like, slap them into the middle tier oh my we have a way more healthy middle tier scene all of a sudden i, d I think that's better for the scene as a whole personally i do but okay, like so you like the idea there's not enough leaderships around at least currently to actually make new guilds at least in their name i don't know uh, I, I think they would, I, they I would do, spring up they would spring up. i do like the idea of doing it but you could also compromise and say you can't lower the siege cap lower than 85 or 80 or 75 80 because then you have then you're stretching for like special teams and other roles and stuff like that so if you had to do a compromise and make like sieges 80 80 man 80 man max like i'm keeping buff did you did i know digi was pretty active but like uh, when we were at 120 members we were bringing 100 players to siege mm -hmm. you know like yep. back in the day and just man, bro, 85. man alliances a lot of guilds, even Bellano's guilds, were pulling 95 members to Siege. Like, mm -hmm. it was it was not really... It yep. was a, it was mm -hmm. partly why your guild is strong. Like, Correct. if you can't bring those players, that's your that's that's your fault, fault for having AFK members in your guild. I would agree. If they're not playing the game, get them out, you know? Like, it's yeah. your, the spot, like, when your spots are more competitive, your players are incentivized to get better, it's more healthy for the scene. Instead, now you've got 50 players in every guild that don't need to show up to anything, and right. they're AF gang. Like, like, uh, yeah. But don't you think the Personally, player base as a whole? But but but, but don't you think the player base as a whole, like a couple years ago, or like back in the days, as, as you refer it to, was way more active than it is currently? Our number season, our number season's but, been dying for years, and we have like. Yes, I, 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 I know. That's why I'm it, saying like, if that's a compromise. Would be 80 men. Like, bro, if you're if you're a siege guild. You should at least be able to bring 80% attention. Correct. Like, I would have said 85 as well. That's, I would have like, said 85 and 90, to be honest. Like, Again, I think that it's an important indicator for how... 
how strong your guild is. It's like important to like, like, hey, like, yeah, we can bring 90 people. We're not the strongest. That's how Dismantled used to do business back in the day. No, we don't have the best players, but like we can bring a shitload of people to Siege though. You know what I mean? Like, like that, that was important. Um, I'm curious, Jason, do you like the idea of rolling back alliances? Do you mean like keeping them, but make it a hundred max, right? Yes, correct. I'm fine with that, yeah. I, I would still suggest, like, yeah, make Siege, like, 85, I think, is a fair number, right? So you have a bit more than Node War, because usually you have people that can't attend Node War, but can attend Siege. Um, so you have that slight difference between Node War and that, and then you also have, like, a little bit of room for IRL for people that not can't attend every Siege, right? So I think, like, 85, maybe 90 or something, like, is, is a fair number for Siege, anyhow. Okay, uh, I'm curious, um, what is Kand Kandaya, what do you feel about... Um... Like, or what are people saying about potentially moving the alliance system back? I mean, for alliances, I don't know. Like, making alliances for 150 is giving flexibility to the guilds or alliances, whatever you call it. It's because if you just put that 100 limit, in that 100 limits, people will not be able to join the siege or something. And then it will just reduce the um, participant numbers for siege. For example, 20 people may not be able to go there. They may be have in real life things. It's a problem. And it will just add huge pressure on the guilds, on the guild managements. So 100 is, if they've reduced the maximum participants of Siege to 80, then 100 is okay. But if they just keep the 100 participants on Siege as the max, then 120 or 150 alliances should be kept like that. That's what I'm thinking. I'll be honest. I, I think that a, a hundred man cap alliances and a, um, a hundred man cap guilds actually means less work for leadership course. As someone that had to lead a 100 man guild and then also had to lead a 150 man alliances, the 150 man alliance is way more work than the hundred man guild. If they roll back alliances, it, it's way easier to manage 100 people than it is to manage 150 basically all week long and even into Siege. Yeah, you're just expecting everyone to come to Siege, but like overall, you have 50 less people to try to like count your ducks um, at the end. And you're not managing another fucking guild constantly to try to say, okay, who's online? I need to log over there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, you're. But the management between the guilds, like the alliance system, would be lower. But don't you think you have with the the alliance system, it kind of breaks up the people what people have to do because you have fifty more people and a whole another leadership core to help you. Plus, like if you remove the oh, alliance system, how it works. then you then you break a, alliances. Then you just break them at hundred. Yeah. Then you break the community part of it, the aspect of the other fifty people. But the alliance stay. Yeah, yeah, but okay, okay, it's just okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. But then, then you kind of think about it as just a guild, right? But anyways, listen, listen. So, like, if you do that, you break a community, for one, right? And then you got to hopefully pray that those other 50 people can coexist, that aren't getting to the main guild, can hopefully coexist or, like, be a part of another guild that they don't like. Because you don't factor in people disliking other people. Of course there's going to be some, of course there's going to be some, like, initial disagreements over who's going to be, who's going to get into the 100-man guild, but, like, yeah, once you get over the initial hump of having to break up these 150-man alliances, um, I do think that overall, everyone in the Node War scene benefits um, from it. And I think that the, the leadership argument is null and void because, again, the alliance system would still be a thing. If you have two alliances or two leadership cores that want to work together and help each other, they can still do that. It's just a 100-man cap. The only real argument here against it is the three guilds in North America that can actually exist as one leadership core, one core. So I'm talking about Show Nation, Digital, and Corrupt. Statistic is is um, like kind of like a... Um, an outlier here because we have a lot of people that are in our guild and we're teaching people how to node war so we can also run 150 man alliance but generally speaking cho nation digi and corrupt are the only three uh alliances at least in north america that can run like 150 what essentially is 150 man guild instead of a 100 man guild it's not really an alliance it's just one guild like everyone else and you can like jason i'm not sure how it is on eu i think it's different leadership cores running different communities so i don't even really think this is a problem on eu if they were to roll back the alliance system to 100 i don't think that anyone really has to break up their um their community necessarily is that the case um because... i'm thinking right now i know unpred wouldn't have an issue i believe conquer would be able to sort it out easily as well i think we might have an issue in opposite mm -hmm. we have some people that 
would probably just get yeeted. Um, Orca Bros would probably... Like, I think all of the bigger guilds would manage to sort it, pretty sure, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, okay, so uh, I'm curious what Yum Yum thinks. So obviously there's mm -hmm. some pushback on the Alliance thing. That's totally fine. Uh, that's what discussion is for. Yum Yum, what does Korea think of maybe rolling back the Alliance system? Yum Yum is a... 연맹을 배부로 줄이는 거에 대해서 어떻게 생각하시는지 원하시는 숫자 있는지 네. 연맹 최대도 100으로 줄이면은 그만큼 네. 인원이 분산돼서 참여 길드가 막 늘어나거나 인원 수가 분배되는 아하. 그런 긍정적인 효과도 있겠는데 전 제일 마음에 걸리는 건 공성 시지쪽이 좀 저는 걱정됩니다. 그 시지 공성은 최상의 엔드 컨텐츠라는 좀그 상징적인 의미가 있는 컨텐츠잖아요. 근데 네. 이 연맹 최대 인원 100을 설정해 버리면 좀 그런 의미가 yeah. 좀 like, bro, he just doesn't think I don't see it. Like, what are we talking about? 한다면 좀 공성 쪽의 시스템도 같이. If I was sincerely trying to push a narrative, why would I have this here? Why would I be asking for feedback? Like, okay, so he he says that if it goes down to 100, he thinks they will it will bring a lot of positives as you guys have discussed. They will bring more guilds. Uh, people might be more uh, comfortable with those numbers, but he's more worried about the siege side of it. In case you know, if the numbers do change uh, for uh, for siege, also it might introduce many problems that he doesn't know. He doesn't know what could happen. He's just saying he can imagine that there would be problems. So he thinks obviously, if the alliances did go back down to a hundred, the alliance number, um, the some of the systems within siege might have to change too. Is what he wanted to say. Yeah. Yeah, and that was the concern that other people had, right? Like siege mm -hmm. is the concern. So if they move siege down to eighty-five, I think that more people. Would probably be on board with it, and I'd be okay with Siege moving down uh, to 85 as well. I'm okay with that. Mm. Uh, I, I, yeah, like mm -hmm. there's always going to be people out there that like the 150 man alliances. Um, mm. But like again, I think overall, I think if we're going to try to make this Node War system work, I think you have to maximize the number of guilds. And I think that overall, most people are like, yeah, it would probably be better to roll that back. So uh, I'm curious what other feedback, like for improvements, people might have. Can die? I don't think we reached you. Um, for improvements, um, do you have any ideas that haven't been shared yet um, as far as improvements to the to the system? I have four people on Nordwars. We were talking about Siege, but I want to share them. I'm just considering, and I assume that we just fix these snipe issues. Then we will just we will when we add them, it will be okay. But just think that we fix because this is our prior priority should be snipe issue. Like participant mm. pretty sites. If we add some pretty cool sites to the participant guilds to prevent snipe, then we can do this. For example, I believe you said that like if we just increase the number of the um, participants in one region, and then this war system is working perfectly. Yes, I agree. The rule of dividing the battle into the two different regions should be changed based on the number of participants. Yes, we have it right now, but it has to be a little bit more. This, uh, this, there should be no division into two different regions until the total number of participants reach the guild number of participants reach. This way, a much more crowded, a chaotic environment can be created in one region. So, providing more active PP query, this will provide more and better PP experience. The information about the regions and the participants should be shared until the last 10 minutes, which will prevent the pre-politic things. On the other hand, there's another thing that uh, one of my friends told me um, to add a little bit spice. Uh, the names of participant guilds and the players should be anonymous to minimize the potential political issues while in war. Wait, and you on mean the other like hand, the guilds should be like, you can't see the name of the guild that you're fighting? Yeah, name, you know, the, the guild name and the uh, player's name. You will not be able to see it. You're gonna get some spice. rolled by the rank one if you push. Uh, because, of, because I've heard many things that while in the war, people just uh, uh, PMing, private messaging each other in game, in war, uh, they're just doing, you know, politics. Let's go, let's do this, let's do that or something. So to, it will maybe prevent a little bit, uh, just a little bit. On the other hand, for the shortest time, um, Ford, when a guild capture a node, an additional time of around 2-3 minutes should be added to ensure that extremely short battles become more manageable. 
for the shortest one. For example, they're like nodes for 10 minutes, 20 minutes or something. If someone has get it, three minutes, maybe five minutes, just add on it. If someone get it again, and more and more and more for the shortest one. Okay, hold on. Say that last bit again. For example, they're like short, they're like short uh, cooldowns on the force, isn't it? Uh -huh. Like maybe five, yeah, yeah. maybe 10 minutes uh -huh. or something. Right. If someone is capture it, they should be, I mean, um, system should add two, three, four, five minutes on it randomly to increase the duration of the fight on that fort. Um, so I, I'm just misunderstanding. So like, it should just add time to a fort like randomly? If it's like a low timer fort? If it gets captured. <laughs> if it gets yeah, captured, it should, it should get add captured five by minutes. Someone. Okay. Yeah, okay. two to five minutes randomly add. So, so to increase the PvP duration on that fort, and they can also manage their uh, position. They can just, you know, it's... Ex we are just talking about it's too short or something. Everybody is whining about, complaining about thing. There are two short forts. This can maybe fix a little bit, this, the issue. Uh, the, uh, okay, yeah, I actually agree with the capture the new, like, fort mm. and increase the time by three to five minutes. I actually like that. Um... Yep. I'm I'm curious what you guys all think about hiding guild names I... and player names in Node Wars, kind of like Anonymous Arsha. Mm. That's that's interesting. Um, you can hide your own guild name. I don't think hiding everybody's is good. Why don't you think? So it's you good? know, if... I'm curious. Because... Like like I'm trying to think of why this would be bad. Like overall, I think um, I ask you gotta ask the question that like is the what's more fun? <laughs> is is one v one v ones better or is to, or do you like 2v2s, 3v3s, 4v4s? What's like more fun? I, that that would probably be a, like a good poll. Like if you want to do that. Divios, like, if you want to join, I can get you, know. you in here. Cause like to me, group fights are better. Like a one, oh, actually 1v1s have it. 1v1s are cool, but like 1v1v1s just are, just are a mess. But like I'd rather a 2v1 or a 2v2 or a 3v3 and, or a 1v1. I hate 1v1s. Than a 1v1v1. Well, like, yeah, a 1v1v1 is a nightmare. A 1v1 I yeah. don't like very much, but it's still better than a 1v1v1. Um, right, I'd rather get 2v1 than a 1v1v1. It's true. Yeah, like, I would rather just know, names, you know what I mean? It's going to be a 1v1v1. Yeah. yeah. But, like, I'd I rather get 2v1 than a 1v1v1 so, uh, because it's just oh, a mess. You, what? You, you push some gear, and then you just get pushed in your back, and it's just shit. Bro. <laughs> I don't know about hiding guild name. Like, then you have no idea how strong the guild is that you're about to, like, push. They're just white dots. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, everyone is just an enemy, which is honestly what they want, which is why I'm like, yeah, hold on. He's kind of cooking. But, like, then the other part of me is like, no, he's not. Like, shut up. Like, I don't, I don't, <laughs> uh, I, I honestly, I don't know how to feel about it. Um, like, I'm curious, like, so, Jason, how do you feel about hiding, like, guild names? Like, exactly? I, I see the point behind it, and honestly, it sounds interesting. And, like, for, I don't know, maybe, like, a, a separated region as a testing phase or something, I would be down to give it a shot. <laughs> but I feel phase. like shot callers... I feel like shot callers would hate it because if you don't yeah. know who you push, yeah. it's hard to go like, okay, so there's a difference. If you're going to push Conquer or yeah. if you're going to push Revive, and there's like no disrespect to Revive or like Salute or anything, right? But like if you're in a 2v1 situation, for example, right? And you know you're going to have to fight like one stronger guild and one weaker guild, you will try to not pop PAs for the weaker guild and you're going to try to keep them for the stronger guild and you can't. You, you might waste your shit on the weaker guild, and then the stronger guild is just gonna roll over you, right? Yeah. And also right. on top of that, 1v1v1 is a nightmare. We had one fight on a Tuesday, like the first Tuesday after the rework, where it was five PvP guilds for four fours because of three snipes. Thank you, by the way. Um, so we were the ones that didn't get a fort. So we were the ones trying to capture a fort, while Conquer was just roaming around, killing whatever they saw inside. So we were trying to push the unpredictable fort or the Orca Bros Alliance fort and Conquer would just push into our asses and it was a nightmare to play. You did not have fun. <laughs> like, yeah, I think that, like, I think it, people are saying it adds strategy. I think it just removes strategy. I think there's more it strategy. strategy because you don't have information. Yeah, you don't Whatever. understand who's flanking you and you don't understand who to respect and who to push and who not to push. It's Man. just a clown fiesta. So, like, I'm leaning against it. I'll be honest with you. I, I, I lean against something like that because, like, 
yeah, you're right. It's a nightmare for the shot callers. You also don't know which fort to push other than just like pushing in and being like, yep, that one's Joe. And <laughs> then go into a different fort. You know what I mean? Like, like that, like the only guilds that like that, I think are like the really strong ones that aren't getting a fight. However, it would probably help a little bit with guilds just standing around. Um, so Man, I'm curious please. what, yeah. Um, what, what is, what does Yambiam think about it? Mm. Like basically making it like anonymous Arsha, so you don't know what guild is what and how, like, w like what names are. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Go back, yeah. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Name, what do you think? What do you think? So, name is called Guild plus user name. Bro, this is a clown fiesta suggestion, dude. This is just an. Guild's 목적이 어부징 방지라면은 큰 소용은 없을 것 같고. Okay. 좀 약간 상대가 누군지 몰라서 그 약한 길드가 강 길드를 피하는. 아니면 강 길드가 약한 길드만 자격 가는 그런 상황은 없어질 것 같아서 네. 재미는 있을 것 같은데 전 네. 굳이라는 느낌이 좀 강하네요 저는 굳이 굳이 오케이 okay. 오케이 okay, so he's saying that um if it was like in order to like prevent politics and abusing he thinks that wouldn't be very effective because people just come in contact through like third party software like discord whatnot uh but that is if we if he's ignoring that side of it he thinks it could be fun it's interesting it's you know he's interested in it he thinks you know like a weaker guild going against the stronger guild without knowing what the guild is that could be funny or fun and entertaining but he thinks like not really necessary he's kind of like mm, do we really need that okay that's what his, his final opinion was like, gotcha okay that? um yeah, yeah no i'm um, yeah go ahead uh when I just say this, I'm just trying to just... We will not see the actual names of guilds and actual names of the members of the guild. For example, I will just join there, I will see my own guild's name, but whenever I just started to see the other guys, I will, for example, PA can just give random names to the guilds, and they can just change their uh, members' name to the anonymous members. They can just colorize the guild name, for example, Heydel, Calpheon, or something like that. Oh, like an ABC a system. Yeah, mm. Team ABC or something, mm. but not Team ABC mm. because Team A, Team B is just making some kind of problem. But if we if PA can do that, maybe they can just name some uh, streamers name Blue Blue Squadron Quill, for example, just in a funny things. But the idea of behind this, the politics mm. in while in the while you're just fighting against someone, they just PM you private message. Hey, stop fight me. Let's go fight against this one and blah blah blah. So, I don't know. But that can still happen, yeah. no? Like, As for like, let's say you name it Heidel Calfion and Valencia, right? Heidel can still message Calfion and go like, let's fuck over Valencia. Because yeah, I but he means, no, I think what, what he means is, Valencia's. but it'll be you still don't know what guild is Heidel and what guild is Valencia. So you can uh, team up with each other, but you don't know what guild you're, gonna... you're teaming up with. I guess that's what he meant. What did I'm not you? Sure. Yeah. What did you kind of know? Yeah, would you would you just know? Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean, mean you would yeah. kind of know. I gotta know. I feel like it's kind of oh, that one's corrupt. You kind of you know just find I mean? out after yeah, one I push. guess they can be like, hey, this is X guild. Don't hit us. Let's team up against. The I think it'd be silly if somebody was like somebody pushed into a guild that mm. Cho was on the node and got completely wiped. Like, yep, that's Cho Nation. Like, yeah. We're wrong. I think that'd be kind of funny. What like, I'm doing straight straight know. away. We're we're what we're doing is we're getting one person from the guild I'm allying allying myself with to walk to our base to tag our fort. Oh, now we know it's Heidel. Okay, cool. That guild's Heidel. Like, that, now you, it doesn't change, like, what guild is which. Like, you'll know eventually in, in like, like Cow five pushes. minutes of fighting. Yeah, I guess it'd be hard it, to not idea, find though. ways around it. it is, right? it's the idea itself is interesting, but... though, yeah. Yeah. It's just the execution uh, would be rough. I don't know. Completely uh, removing yeah. them, I think if you wanted to do that, the test would be fine, but I think adding Heidel or whatever is pointless. Yeah, it would be it's interesting. Yeah, it sadly, it doesn't ever... affect them. Yeah. If it was ever to be implemented, like tier one or like thirty man's tier one, where it's just an absolute nightmare, maybe. Like, but okay. when there's like twenty forts and there's no outline with anybody, like maybe. But okay, um, there is one more thing I want to go over, and that's the, some of the forum stuff that's been done about this. Yeah. The highest <laughs> upvoted post in the history of the game, uh, in all of the years the game has existed, the highest upvoted post that has ever existed is currently uh, on the forums. It has 14,656 upvotes with 1,437 downvotes uh, uh. as of today. 
Uh, and it basically just says, keep the rewards, scrap everything else and start over. And then it's basically a copy pasta of somebody over and over and over again for pages, um, expressing their uh, disagreement with the current Node War system. Um, I would say that normally I would say that like, yes, the PVPers um, of any MMO community are the loudest and the most obnoxious. Um, however, this is kind of a lot of people. So like, it's not a forum post that I feel like can be shrugged off. Um, I do feel like that like changes need to be added and they need to be added quickly. And it's not just this, I'm gonna say this directly, like stop giving us like one patch where you're like, okay, we've shown them that we're gonna give feedback and then not doing anything for like fucking eight months. Okay, we want to see consistent feedback on this and we want to see it changed. Like we want to see consistent changes on the global apps basically every single week. We want to try to make sure that you're listening to us because if you're not, people are going to start quitting the game. Um, or what people are going to start to the, boycotting What happened the to the people that were working on War of the Roses? Because I feel like yeah. War of the Roses, we were getting it's like gone. so many updates mm -hmm. so yeah. fast so cool. over cool. and over and over. Yeah, but they were fixing War of the Roses every week. Yeah. yeah. They were doing so good. What, yeah. where, what happened to that, man? The best. Yeah. What happened to War of the Roses? Every guild lead, every guild league agreed on you that the way they approach War of the Roses, not the actual system, right? Like people maybe didn't like that, right? But the way they approached the changes, patches every two weeks for War of the Roses was the best approach PA ever had in the history of the game to changing a system. And I think every so EU guild lead agreed on that. Bro, War of the Roses was amazing. I loved that uh, that game mode. Um, they even and, did good with G League. And they, Constant updates. I yeah. think the dev team's gone. Like, what What? They what happened, it. bro? Like, where, where's the War of the Roses at? Like... Like, I, I, it's just very strange. Um, there is another forum post that I wanted to talk about, Choice. Uh, everybody knows who Choice is. Hopefully, he doesn't need an introduction. Um, uh, possibly the developers who have no idea what goes on in North America don't know who Choice is. Like, like they don't know who I, they don't know who anybody is. But, like, Choice is one of our biggest content creators in the entire category and has been for an extremely long time. Uh, he posted on the forums about the new Node War system, and I wanted to make sure that it got read. So, he's actually proposing... Uh, kind of an addendum to the current system, uh, which I actually I, I actually kind of like, so I'm curious what your guys' feedback on this. He said, the new Node War system lacks some critical elements uh, to be a full replacement to the old Node War system. These are changes I suggest to make, the, uh, um, to make it a more fun experience for all players. Let's start with the main thing that makes the current system unfun. Number one, wars end too soon. We already covered that. We all agree with this. Number two, wars have a lot of downtime where there's no action or PvP. We saw this with Jason vacuuming. He's absolutely farming content off of it. Honestly, it's some of the best content I've ever seen out of Jason. You're a gamer. But he's absolutely right about that. Number three, he says... Um, wars that have uh, wars that do have action are not very strategic, and just throwing yourself at a fort and hoping for the last hit that is 100% true. That's there's basically no strategy in the new system, I would agree. And number four, there's no sense of urgency in the node war at all, since all that matters is what happens in the final moments before the node war expires. And we talked about this as well. This is absolutely the case. Um, and I again, I think that the solution to this is to make all the forts question mark forts potentially, uh, but. Uh, he actually proposes a different system altogether. Um, he said, the war needs a complete revamp in the way that it works uh, from a King of the Hill style battle to a Dominion slash Hardpoint style war, kind of like RBF, but quite different. War should last 90 minutes instead of 60 to, fit, uh, to fix the first issue. I would agree with that too. I think that 90 minutes is, is, a, is a fine duration for the Node War. Uh, and I think we all agree that, uh, yeah, it needs to be longer. One hour is just a little bit short. Uh, then he says, war should be structured as such. On each region, there are 15 total nodes. That means 15 total forts. And based on the number of guilds participating, there should be a select number of them active at any given time. In this example, let's say eight guilds are participating. So there should be three out of 15 nodes active at one time at the start of the node war. If a guild owns more than one of these nodes while they're active, they accumulate points. Uh, a victor is decided based on the guild that has accumulated the most number of points over the course of the, course of the node war and are awarded a tier five bundle. The number two guild gets a tier four bundle. The number three guild gets a tier three. And these active nodes should be regularly changed every 15 minutes and double the points per second that they give you. Uh, so if a guild has a very mm. good defense, they need to start over and move to capturing a, um, a newly highlighted node and guilds that have uh, that have a bad start can catch up as the war progresses. Um, he says, why is this system better? It says that this solves every issue the current system has. 
Uh, it solves the feeling uh, of nothing matters until the last minute of the wars while making the entire duration feel intense. It adds a lot of strategy in capturing nodes quickly after spawns fortify or taking flags uh, to make people spawn further uh to make people spawn further and increase your capture duration when you own a fort number two he says long duration um the longer duration is more satisfying than 11 to 30 minute node wars number three it maintains the anti-politics aspects of the current system that people like so much and number four it's easy to implement all you have to do is make it where wars are 90 minutes nodes are selected randomly just at an interval of 15 minutes rather than just at the start of the war and the guilds accumulate points after holding them rather than an all or nothing aspect of holding it as the timer expires um in order to explain this uh a little bit more in depth so that people understand uh i'm actually gonna go ahead and do this um I'm going to go ahead and dumpster all of this. Uh, so essentially what he's proposing is that there's a lot of forts um, uh, on any one. I, Jay did the whiteboard thing. I'm doing the whiteboard thing. I was thing. about to say, bro. I'm doing it, bro. I'm getting a whiteboard. Okay, bro, I'm getting the whiteboard, but I'm a way better, I'm a way better drawer than Jay is. Okay. All right. The pink, uh, the, the pink ones basically spawn in, in like at the zero minute mark. Um, like the yellow ones spawn in at like, let's say 30 minutes. Okay, and the blue ones would spawn in at like one hour. Okay, and guilds can hold multiple. So like if guild one wants to hold mm. this fort, this fort, and this fort, okay, well then they're going to accumulate a bunch of points because they hold all the forts. Like uh, these forts could go inactive after a while, and then you'd have to move forward and capture the next, uh, the next forts at the 30 minute mark. And then like these forts would disappear and then the the guilds would have to come forward and capture these forts and these forts are worth way more than the ones at the start of the war uh in terms of points per second um he's proposing he's proposing like a point system kind of like we have in siege currently where like you have a first place guild you have a second place guild you have a third place guild and so on um i'm curious what you guys think about a system like this um i thought it was a reasonably good idea i'm not sure if it fixes all the problems it would have its own issues but like I think that it, it it might work. Um, I'll start with Jason. What do you think? I like the idea. However, I'm gonna be honest. I don't think uh, they're gonna rework the rework. I like while I like the idea and I think it could work out. And yeah, as you mentioned, it has its own issues. I think it's too much of a stretch that PA is gonna push through. I just doubt it's gonna happen. But I think it's nice. Okay. Um. Uh. Seizing. Um. I think it's probably one of the best post we've had for the reddit for the new nowhere thing to be honest i think toys did really really good i think it kind of fixes a lot of the issues that the current system has but as you said before uh i think it uh, will come his own to be honest but i think choice did a really good job i don't i think jason's right that i don't think they're reverting what they already have i think it's pretty silly I, for us to think so yeah i think i i think so as well and, and like the, all the people that are just like just revert it just revert it it's not going to get revert i hate to be this guy they're not going to revert it like this is how they are as a company they're the just old, never gonna the revert old, it the old system had a lot of issues too yeah. that people don't even like talk about right the fact that we had like lack of fights some there were some weeks we just you didn't even fight because politics was so ass due to people just not wanting to fight and it was just all about ego and it's how it always has been but i i think this new system probably has it too it's just not as bad as it used to because you're kind of forced on the same in the region and you can kind of force yourself to fight certain people mm -hmm. before they would just perma dodge you Okay, Ham. What do you think about that? I don't think anybody wants to, wants to be wants any, like the old system back, right? Like nobody wants. I don't to know about it. that. But people people want the queuing system, right? With the old node war system, I think that's what people actually want because that means you get the best of the old node war system, where you get fights based on like you get drafted onto random nodes with whoever, and then you also get uh. You actually, you don't have to deal with, uh, like, perma politics for 24 hours a day on Discord. Like, I think that gives you best of both worlds, to be honest. Like, uh, that, that's, that's what I'm, I'm looking for. But. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Um, let's see. Kendaya? Hmm. Overall, everything is okay for me if that, if PA can actually implement it properly. And if they listen to what we say, it, I mean my problem and my idea is just like choice is good yours is good everyone is everyone's idea is good the problem is if you actually going to listen to them if they actually listen to them are they going to able to just successfully implement into the game i i like most of the ideas in today's 
I, I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and Yam Yam? I'm going to keep it a buck. I kind of lost you when you were explaining what Twitch was saying. Could you give me a quick TLDR so I could... <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know, man. It's 4 a.m., man. Here, <laughs> you're good. Let me get the whiteboard back out here. Yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. <laughs> um, all just, right. So, yeah. Choice is proposing, like, a point system <laughs> right. where guilds uh -huh, fight yeah. over yeah. Um, forts uh -huh. over the course of the node war. And, like, more okay. forts become available as the node war goes on. Um, okay, okay, and, okay. like, point the forts that yeah. are available towards the end are worth more points per minute. Like, if you hold them and you have a good defense... And then at the end of the node war, guilds are awarded like rewards based on who had the oh, highest okay. total number of points, uh, like rank one, rank two, rank three, rank four, rank five. Right, so you don't get eliminated for owning a node with the time running out. Correct. It's just how many points you got at yes. the end of the war time. Correct. Okay, got it. So okay. sorry about that. Thank you. Oh, Yam Yam Nim. 그 새로 제시된 시스템은요. 그 초이스라는 또 되게 인기 많은 스트리머인데 그 친구가 글쓴 건데 이제 거기서 어 거점점 포인트 시스템으로 바꿔버리면 이제 거점마다 뭐 1점, 2점, 3점 뭐 이렇게 다양하게 두고 어떤 거점을 먹어 놓고 그걸 지키면은 시간이 끝날 때그 예, 포인트에 따라서 1, 2, 3등 막 이런 식으로 하는 거 어떻게 생각하시는지. 아, 그 거점 하나 먹고 그 시간 끝나면 탈락이 아니라 아니, 빠지는 게 아니라 예. 거점전은 계속 진행되고 계속 싸우고 시간 끝났을 때 가장 많은 예, 점수를 횟수해 놓은 길드가 이기는 걸로. 뭐 1, 1등, 2등 뭐 이런 식으로. 오, 되게 음. 들었을 땐 괜찮은 것 같은데요. 네. 이게 약간 아쉬움도 좀 해결할 수 있을 것 같아요. 이제 생길드는 야. 아무도 우리한테 안 오니까 그냥 금방 야. 벌 서다가 가만히 서 있다 끝나는 경우가 좀 허다한데 야. 생길드 입장에서는 되게 좋은 방식 같은데요. 스페셜이... 오케이. 더 있으세요? 네, 거기서 끝. 오, 그 말고는... 딱히 okay. 좋아요. 어, 생각하는 것도 좋은 시스템 같아요. 사이다. 네, 외국 친구들 말이 많아가지고. 네. Uh, he says he likes it. He thinks it would be more fun. It would be more rewarding, and it seems to eliminate a lot of problems, especially for the uh, stronger PVP and guilds. So yeah, he thinks the point system is very fascinating, and it, he thinks it'll make it really entertaining and fun. Uh, okay, his, uh, so he likes yeah, it. Opinion okay. very, yeah. yeah, he likes it. Yeah. All Worth right, it, yeah. but. Because Choice has proposed it, of course, the developers are not going to listen, and that's tragic. Um, the last time Choice proposed oh, no. a forum post for RVF, it got completely ignored. It was like the highest outvoted forum post we'd ever seen. And no, they never even addressed it. They didn't even look at it. It wasn't even like, like they, they didn't even just say no. They just didn't say anything and just moved on, um, which is kind of crappy. Oh, but I, um, wait, what'd you say, Jason? Uh, I would have two more things for the improvement list. Go okay, ahead, yeah, let me hear it. Um, so one thing that I think you didn't uh, wrote down yet, but we mentioned earlier, is uh, don't split the region up, at least for tier 3, unless oh, yeah. it's 9 guilds or more, maybe. Like, I think 9 is fine, right? Like, you can easily fit, fit 8 guilds on the tier 3 node before you need to split them up. It, it's way too early currently. Okay. Um, I think 9 is a fine number, because then you have 5 and 4, you could argue 11 or something, but yeah, I think 9 is a, at least an improvement already, right? Um, and another idea, I don't know, like maybe some of the, like, maybe some other ideas on it. Um, I would say you could lower the, the member cap for the Balinos Siege, because right now, so, so that tier 1 and tier 2 guilds have a place to go, because right now, if you're tier 1 and tier 2 guild, where do you siege, bro? You, you bring like 40, 55 ish people, where do you see bro? Balinos last week was dead, at least on Europe. I don't know how it is for NA. But NA, we got fighting. We got twelve guilds fighting. Oh, oh, you mean Balinos for like siege? Yeah. Oh God, yeah, Balinos, Balinos siege for North where America. Do you go? If 100 men get places there. Where, where do tier one and tier two guilds go if a hundred men get places on Balinos, bro? They're getting far. Well, Balinos, Balinos needs to be changed to Serendia. I'm gonna keep it a hundred percent buck. Like uh, this is a separate topic, but like. Balinus Siege needs to be Serendia Siege instead. Like, I'm just going to keep this 100%. There are too many guilds trying to place on Balinus, um, and Balinus can only fit seven forts at maximum. At absolute maximum, because there are so many safe zones, um, and there are, like, uh, and there are so many guilds, you just can't force it. Even if you, like, place the forts perfectly min-distance to each other, you can still only fit seven forts. It's extremely frustrating. 
Um, so like Balanos Siege needs to be moved to Serendia Siege instead so that more guilds can actually participate. Um, number one. Number two, Balanos Siege on um, North America is like kind of a super cringe fest. You have like one or two guilds basically trying to exclude uh, basically all of the other guilds uh, from it. They just try to get together like their script and they just try to like basically keep everyone else from doing uh, anything. Um, so that they can rotate the region back and forth and they get their their way. It's it's that like they think they're Emperor Palpatine, but that's just the, the way that it is. It's always been this way for Balanos Siege. They're dog shit guilds, but like they just they can't help themselves when it comes to politics. They have to try to circle jerk. But that's why people like the new Node War system is they can't also be written out for that. So like Balanos Siege Probably. is always gonna be that way. Um uh, like I think everybody agrees, but there was a post about it and it just didn't like I'm pretty sure Vicious made the post actually, and they did get like decent amount of upvotes, and they just didn't say anything. Yeah. I think one of the so CMs basically kept keeping it up. Yeah, I think one of the CMs did right. respond to it, and they didn't even do anything. So I have no idea. I think they it was around the time we were talking about place right now to siege. Like generally, yes. where, where do you go yeah. with 30 members for siege? You you, you can't if there's a hundred men guilds just getting sent right. So I think yeah. making like Balinor siege 50 member cap, which is the current tier two node war cap. I think then tier one and tier two both have a place to siege on Balinos, which is supposedly Balinos anyways, right? It's supposed to be the entry level siege guild, so I think it should cater solely towards tier one, tier two. And no tier three lot. guild should place on Balinos siege. Because why? It's not their region, bro. There's three other regions for them. They still do, though. They punch down. Yeah, but yep. that's what I mean, right? They, they only go to Balinos because if they want to farm, like, shit as compared to them, right? Yes, it's Like, correct. no tier three guild should place on Balinos. Yeah. They shouldn't be able to. Well, I mean, that's think, basically uh, how it is nowadays. Like, the 680 cap and down, try to go to Balanos, because that's the only fight there is. If you try to go to Medaya, getting farmed by Chonation. Try to go to uh, Medaya, getting farmed by Corrupt. Try to go to Medaya, getting farmed by Digital. So, like, the only region that people can safely go to where, like, the, like the major siege guilds are not going to really drop on is Balanos. That's basically how it is. And we get Zerg out on Balanos. Yeah, Pretty easy. Yum Yum wanted to yeah. update real quick about the point system that was Choice's idea. Okay. So sorry. Yeah, he says that on, he's looking at like his chat too, I think. So he just added nothing. So from the Korean server perspective, okay. if you asked, would that really work in the Korean servers? He thinks it probably wouldn't work, even though he thinks it's a good system. Uh, he thinks, uh, he doesn't know about the other countries, but in Korea... Uh, it just wouldn't work. I think he's talking about because of the lack of guilds, maybe. Yeah, because there's just not so enough he says, uh, right. Yeah, and he thinks that Jay won't listen to that opinion. He had a deadline. He says, Jay probably won't listen What's... to that kind of opinion. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he says. Well. And then uh, the last line is, Oh, he says, this is all with the assumption that if Jay were, was making changes based on Korean servers. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's that's he what they, they are making change changes system. based yeah. on the Korean servers, and basically that, uh, like that's. It's always been this way. They listen to Korea before they listen to everybody else. Yeah. Someone um, in this chat says Korea says sorry. I yeah. <laughs> we appreciate it. We appreciate it. Thank you yeah. for your sympathy. We appreciate that. Yeah. Um, there is yeah. another system that I would like to talk about. We're going to move on from the node war changes to potentially the much larger uh issue at hand which yes. is the damage reduction uh and Oof. evasion changes that are currently proposed proposed on the global labs um extremely controversial if you have not seen these changes i have a video about it so does uh, a lot of content creators but like yeah basically the global labs this week gave us the details of what the damage reduction evasion changes are uh in in uh, uh, I'm curious what your guys' initial thoughts are on them. Mm. Jason, overall, what do you think about the Global Labs patch? What was EU's reception to the Global Lab patch? You're going to hate me, but can I do a last final statement for the Node War stuff still before? I, I hate you, but you can do that. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I just wanted to like maybe translate it for the Korean people because I'm not sure if it got through. Mm -hmm. The leaderships of all big Node War the Siege Guilds in Europe are about to quit in the next three to four weeks at maximum okay. if PA doesn't at least acknowledge the issues. Every single leadership of the, like, Conquer, I don't know exactly for opposite, but our members are on a hard decline. Unpred, Orca Bros, they are all about to close its door. Everyone has the announcement basically written out and ready to hit enter on the announcement of their Discord if PA in the next 14 to 20 days or something doesn't say 
there is major issues, we will work on it. They all have the announcements ready. They're all ready to uninstall the game, basically. The, the leaderships are about to die. We will have the Korea Tier 3 node was seen in two, three weeks. Hey, and I'm not hey, overacting. They said that publicly on computer stream two, three days ago. You, you can go back, watch the VOD if you want to. They all publicly announced, basically, if in two, three weeks PA doesn't acknowledge issues, Uncapped is dead. Everyone is good. Mm. Okay. Hey, they'll be back. Yeah, it, yeah it, I was going to say, are they really season. quitting, quitting? Or? The leaderships are going to be quitting because the thing is, oh, okay. right? The leaderships they quitting, the game they played Because they removed Note Wars, basically. The game mode that Unseen has played for Unpred, that, yeah. uh, that like Kiyagami for Konka has played, yeah. that Fufu for Oka Bros has played. And this is like the, the core leaderships of all of these guilds. Oh. Just, they remove the game for them. Like, Maybe I, some I, other guilds are gonna. I'm like, in the same boat. Yeah. Genuinely, like th these are not the like. Node Wars are the one thing PA or PA did or BDO has done really well. Like obviously politics and stuff is a downside, but Node Wars is like the one thing that they've done really good. It's the reason I play the games, the reason I log in, and they're not Node Wars. I can, bro. It's more fun to jump in an RBF there than is. go to these Node Wars. Genuinely, like. They last I'm longer in a lot of cases right now. <laughs> like I genuinely, I'm in the same boat. They certainly Not last I'm longer. I'm in four weeks, but like I. Where do you, we're BDO players? Where are we gonna, gonna go? Like, we got nowhere to go. We have nowhere to go. No, no, but like the, the, the difference. Is, I'm, I'm not talking about. Though. I'm like, not talking about your average BDO player saying, "Hey, I will quit." Right? Yeah. There's a difference between your average member quitting no, and your joking. entire leadership no, for quitting. Yeah. Yeah, when no, the leadership because, because quit, the guild don't stuff. understand. There's a yes. difference yeah. between yeah. your shot caller and leadership leaving because Correct. then the guild will like the guild's gonna close its door, right? If Unseen says, "Hey, I'm quitting the game," Unprit, like the entire guild is dead in it the next day, and the same goes for Orca. Like they need to mm. understand the difference between, "Hey, my member X Y Z is quitting," and the leadership's quitting. If the leadership quits, the guild will close its door tomorrow. Right, um... and they'll get consumed by somebody else. Well, but like, there uh, will be less so, guilds, bro. though. Yeah, but there's nobody else left. <laughs> yeah. It's like, all, all the unkept guilds, like, uh, this, this, this is the thing, right? Like, Kiyagami for Konka, uh, Fufu for Unpred, uh, Fufu for Orca Bros, uh, Unseen for Unpred, etc. All of them are, are like that, right? So, so, like, every single Tier 3 Note was each guild is a leadership is about to close the door, right? So it's not like, oh, this closes, I will just go there. There is nothing to go. Unless somebody creates something new, right? But people's motivation is about negative. Okay. All right. Okay. Noted. Now, Jason, what are the thoughts on the damage reduction evasion changes on the global labs? There's super armor and frontal guard changes as well. I'm talking about basically the entire global labs together. What's the reception here? What are your thoughts? What is the, uh, like, what have you kind of heard? People are thinking about it. I'm gonna be honest, I'm a Valkyrie player. I, I have to say, for me personally, it's a massive W, bro. Yeah, it's like, yeah, like, like, yeah, so what, man? God like... on Planet Video, bro. More My class is about to be a walking god. <laughs> More That's the uh, Valkyrie players are up big, bro. <laughs> Damn. We're already getting hated. We're already getting hated for being broken, and now they buffed us even more. Let's go. <laughs> w, bro. <laughs> you just see the smile. You can hear the smile right now. <laughs> nah, man. Look. I mean, yeah, like, I like that the North Dracania and Vusa, I'm gonna be honest. I think it's like Vusa and Awakening Dracania were, were a bit uh, obnoxious the past weeks, right? So I, I like that the North them. Valk is but... for sure more broken than those classes. Mm. Yeah, Just harder to play. Even further, bro, if I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> uh, okay, it's, so, like, what, what have you heard other people saying about it? Um, like, overall. Mixed review, I, I would it, assume? Mm -hmm. The majority of people doesn't dare to judge too much because they can't test it on Global App, right? So we will have to see how it actually pans out once life hits. But reading the notes, like, yeah, it's gonna shift. Like, some classes are gonna be worse than before, some classes are gonna be better and shit, right? But what... It's just gonna be, like, other classes being better and shit, right? Like, mm -hmm. probably a bit more main ball is what I heard, right? So, like, Vike is gonna be up big and shit, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, I, I don't know. I like that most of NA reverberates that sentiment we're all just waiting mm. you can't test anything on the global apps it's not possible the damage is not the same no. at all nothing is is the same nothing works how it should on the global labs and that's why our current system is basically untestable um you can uh, look at the numbers but that's it <laughs> yeah right um c zane what are your thoughts on it um uh from front face i like the idea i'm very worried that the going to be really strong 
uh, I think a lot of people are reacting about it in large scale because in large scale you don't really see a ton of like Giga DR stack players. But I think a lot of people are gonna be overly tanky, and I mean the meta currently is one shot meta, so maybe it'll be better. We can we can hope. I don't think I don't know. I feel be like Arch is gonna be strong. For. So be careful I, what I still you think wish Arch for. I think Arch is gonna be strong. So I, I don't know. I think the build just I think builds will be different. I think build, builds will also be more linear, which kind of sucks. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think that a lot of people complain about the one shot meta, but again, you got to be careful what you wish for, man. If you don't have a one shot meta. What you end up with is a striker that's completely unkillable. Or a, a Valkyrie who you just can't kill. And it just doesn't feel fun because he's just plowing through everybody. Uh, Ham, you do a lot of PvP, uh, mainly large scale. Ham, what are your thoughts on like the DR evasion changes? Oh, there, there's two sides of the it's two, two sides of the coins uh, the coin, right? Yeah. One one side, there's gonna be a, like the classes that are already strong are strong like a lot of the classes <clears throat> like you look at the meta classes they're all strong because they have some sort of sustain or they scale with dp or they have range right the classes that are not meta or they're, they're just going to get stronger and then the classes that are weak bro you got some classes that can barely kill people right now with full glass builds like dude it's going to be worse like th these classes some classes is going to be worse i think these changes I like change. I want change. I've had the same meta for years. Bro, we're about to have eight years of Suck Zerker. I understand. But, like, um, I'm down for change. But we need a balance patch before this goes live. Like, there is so many classes that are completely unplayable if this shit goes live. Just because they can barely kill now. Or they can't kill now. And after this change... They are not killing anything. And then they got like drag, it's still gonna be a one combo, CC reset. I don't know. Suck Zerk, man, that thing's gonna be an unkillable. Like and like some other like there's other classes too. Like I, I just genuinely I am concerned if there's no I, I like some of the proposed changes. Just I am genuinely concerned if there's no balance patch. Like I'm expecting a balance patch from uh uh, like this week, like otherwise this patch makes zero sense. Um, but we'll see. Also, assassins, like any assassin class, completely with this patch. So, is it? Said, I expect a balance patch, but we'll see. Um, yeah, okay. So assassin classes are down tremendous. I think that's mm. definitely a rever reverberated scent, um across the board. Why does everybody think DR is going to be so much better than evasion? I mean, you see the evasion gloves and boots getting, uh, at least the gloves got like the accuracy on it uh, as well. You saw a lot of classes get evasion buffs. Is it just because like 10, because of the way they're reworking evasion, it's just going to be unplayable because you're going to be hit, hit by 10% of everything, no matter what. Is that the reason? No, it's because like some classes went from like 15% buffs or 12% buffs down to like, for example, Lan, it went from 12% to 3% and Lan was barely playable with evasion then. Now it's definitely not. But, like, I'm not going to go and say that exact thing until I see it on live. Mm. Like, I want to see, like, because they're completely changing the way evasion works and how things interact in the game. It's really hard to make a solid judgment on what that is until you actually get to play it. You do it in different so circumstances on live. Mm -hmm. You actually see what it's like in Node Wars, see, like, what it's like in AOS and whatnot, and Guild League and stuff. Like, Really, it's hard to make a certify or like a straight judgment if evasion is dead or um, things like like I don't know. I don't know. It's it's hard to say. Yeah, I mean, on um, top of that, um, to, to quickly add in why people say evasion is kind of fucked, right? You have the 10% base hit rate, you have 10% of damage getting applied even if you don't hit, so that's another 10%. Like 10%, if you from the 90% of misses, you still get 10% damage translated, right? On top of that, you have like some class have 25% base hit rate. I don't know if it's on top of the 10% already, but like, so you have 25% there. Valkyrie gives you another 15%, so those 25% base hit rate classes are gonna have 40% base hit rate, plus then, as, like, the 10% that you get from the game, plus 10% of the damage getting applied. So, like, even if you run, like, negative accuracy, you still almost get to, like, a 50% hit rate from, from, from setup having zero accuracy equipment, right? From, from the pure numbers of, like, this base, this base, this base, this base, with, like, like buffs and shit, right? Like, you end up having 50% hit rate with having not even life equipped. Um, okay. The whole point of evasion was to evade, right? 
then you're yeah. not really doing that. You're just taking damage anyways. Because like if you didn't evade, then you just took the full front damage and you pretty much got deleted. But now you do. Okay. So, that's why I think a lot of people... Like from front face reading it, that's why a lot of people think evasion is dying. Because... You're just taking overall just more damage than you used to. Uh, we don't know how like crazy mm -hmm. it's gonna be, but it'll definitely feel a lot different. Okay. And I do think I DR play, will be stronger. Can I just play advocate there? Like, how I'm looking at it is even if you're even if you're an evasion player, because like they're dude hybrid builds and nuts. By the way, I've seen some things and hybrid mm -hmm. seems really good. But anyway, yep. but. I'm thinking even if you don't evade, you still have like 500, 600 DR. So you're going around with so like does it even matter if you don't have it? I don't know. It's weird, man. I want to see it on live before like making any big, ju yeah, big ju judgments about it. Mm -hmm. But like, I can definitely see both sides of the argument with that one. Kandaya, I know that you have to be very opinionated on it. What do you think of him? Yeah. What do you think of the changes? <clears throat> so uh, I'll try to explain like this. You know, sometimes you see that something coming through you. But it's it's been far away. It's far away, and you cannot see the exact shape of it. But you know that there's something coming big. Okay, mm -hmm. this patch is exactly like that. First, we need to get it in our uh, official uh, servers to test it. But from the data that they shared, I can clearly say that evasion is not that. I'm seeing that people whining about evasion is dead. No, evasion is not dead. Now they're changing, reworking the evasion. There's still like 0 0.8 and 1 accuracy and evasion rate, the proportion between them. And we will still need so much evasion to deal damage to hit the 100% uh, rate. There is no that much free thing. If you guys check the global lab tests, I'm not totally 100% trust them. But if you guys check the global lab tests, like strike a recession or something, you're not being able to hit them. Because there are other things that prevents to deal damage to them. For example, DR. Evasion is specific uh, stats in this game that helps only evasion-based classes. DR is a global stats that helps to every person in the game. So they will give to you free 80 to 90 DR. DR players will be happy for that, but also evasion players, evasion-based classes will be happy for that. Evasion's efficiency looks like it's reduced but they also got DR. Why people just misunderstand this part, I don't know. And evasion is not that. DR is getting buffed, but also evasion is getting buffed. If whenever we see the patch, if they won't change the data, what they shared, that's big for evasion. You guys will see because. And on the other hand, I don't. Uh, this is a little bit toxic, but I don't know why they buffed Succession Berserker, Awakened Striker, Awakened Mystic that much. Uh, if Pierre listen to this, revert them, please. So overall, this is dead. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, overall, uh, I also consider about the sustained problem of the class. All classes that can sustain better compared to the other ones, they will be, uh, you know, they will have so much opportunity to stay alive. If you cannot one shot them, Valkyrie is one of them. In Valkyrie, you have purification, you have your shift E self heal, you have your robot. There are so many sustains. If you cannot kill, even now in this patch, we call it one shot patch, isn't it? Mm. In this one shot patch, we cannot, we are not being able to kill Valkyries in most of time. Even like one shotting with a Drakania, who calls very high damage burst damage class, is being hard to kill Valkyrie. I don't know how we will be able to kill Valkyries after this patch. So it's a problem. If, I mean, if they just Drakani is also same. Drakani is tanky, but they took the tankiness. So they took 30 DR from the Drakania. I'm very happy for that. But sustain is still there. And if they just won't take that sustain away from the Drakania or nerf it, significantly reduce it, Drakania will be one of the most aggressive and also sustainable class in the game with this patch. I'm main Drakania, by the way. Uh, I'm not meta boy Drakania. I'm main Drakania. I don't want to see any class can be that much strong in this game. Succession Berserker was already like big pain in the ass as a problem class and they got they buffed the class. I don't know why they buffed the class. I think KR people doesn't like the uh, Berserker. It's because it is ugly. And Striker is also. They don't like mm. Striker. You cannot find people play Striker or Mystic in KR. They, they do not like it. They want 
I don't know. They want more uh, fashion class, like more booba or booty. I don't know. They need Wusa, they need Mayago, they need Scholar maybe. I don't know. Their mindset is totally different than the other regions. And PA, if you just check it, PA non-stop buffing them. Berserker, how many times it got buffed? I can't remember. Class Striker, non-stop getting buffs. Quality of life updates for Striker or Mystic or something. So Striker will be one of the biggest issue about tankiness because Hashashin will be the biggest, biggest issue. Mystic got buffed. Awakened Mystic is already toxic class and we were just saying that okay mystic is toxic but not able to hit people but got tons of buffs on the skills striker is same berserker is same so i can clearly say that something is big coming i can clearly say that this will create a big gap in this in the middle of this game definitely but we need to see we need to test it will take maybe a month to understand how they should fix that situation because PA is it's a, it's a classic situation. PA just hit, put the bomb, it just um, you know blow, and you just now you need to find where your uh, friends, where your where the other people is just sitting there. Yeah, I mean it will be hard, but that's what I'm thinking overall. I have a question for Juan now because he complained about Mystic buffs. Mystic is dead, bro. Well, I know got... exactly one Mystic player well... on the EU server. Yeah, and they griefed your entire server in like the N or the EU versus Russia siege. I saw him. Yeah, like the one guy that's okay, playing. Okay, okay, wait. And the first is... that you shouted out for griefing was the shot caller, bro. Like, that's... well, yeah. Then he's then he's even more griefing. That guy's a loser. <laughs> yeah, bro, what kind of shot caller plays Mystic? What an idiot, bro. You're supposed to set the example, not be the problem. Um. Anyway, okay. Awakening I, I Mystic got a 0.4 percent damage buff. Uh, on one of its skills, so it's too strong. Revert it. Like, honestly. Well, I, I do think that Valkyrie getting a massive buff like that to tankiness, Zerker getting a massive buff to tankiness, and Striker getting a massive buff to tankiness is wild. Um, Like, those classes are going to be the only classes that you see. Um, if those are, uh, if they just buff, like, the frontline classes and the frontline classes still do damage like they do now... Um, like it's, you're just going to put like, they're, you're never going to die and you do damage. Why would you not play those classes? Um, but like, Archer's it's still going to profit from this as well, though. It's yeah. I mean, but like, like I yeah, think Archer takes a massive W from this. Arch they, Archer like, can't lose. Good, still. Archer like, can't lose. If they buff females, they buff males. They still buff Archer either way. No, but it's, Archer it's just gets right? like, That's but, not how it works. It, it's we could be weaker. Like, the current meta just gets improved even further, right? Like the current meta is, is at least for Europe, it's like Vike Zerg Archer, and what's what's getting buffed? Vike Zerg Archer, right? Well, like, let's mm -hmm. let's see it, what it I, further I, enhances it. Let's see what Yambiam thinks. Uh, we have, Yam -Yam hasn't gotten a chance to talk in a while. Uh, what do Yam -Yam, mm -hmm. What does Yambiam and KR think of like the the global lab patch where mm -hmm. all of the damage reduction and evasion yeah. and the super armor and the yeah. frontal gardener are buffed? Mm -hmm. Whatever. Oh. So he already sent me what he wanted to say. In DMs and okay. translated, it says, uh, he says, for an example, well, he started with an example. If the standard just came through, he personally has like an example, it's like a 289 AP uh, well, balance hold on. build. Hold on. A, yep. I think it is important to at least translate the questions and stuff so that his chat knows what's going on. Otherwise, oh, yeah, yeah, I've been doing that. They can see my DMs to Yambiam on oh, his Okay, stream. then we're good. Yeah, all right. So then I've, go been, ahead. I've been right. just, yeah, I've been yeah, yeah, keep yeah. typing as you guys talk, spoke. Okay. I kept typing, yeah. Um, yeah, so Yambiam said, like, um, for example, he has a 289 AP, like, I think, I'm assuming it's a DP-based balance build, where he says the whole point is it takes two combos to kill him and one combo for the other person who is AP-heavy to die. If the changes come through, now it's going to be two combos to kill him and two combos to kill you also. So the balance setting, like, certain builds become very irrelevant, is what his point was. I'm, I'm, kind, of I'm kind of assuming, not TLDR, is what, that's what he meant, because it was a little bit vague. Uh, but he says, uh, especially classes with lifesteal and heal uh, skills or passives become way too strong. Obviously, examples are Drac, Valk, Zerk, etc. Uh, but Kindia does bring a point. Koreans don't really play Zerka, but that's a separate point. Because um, he's ugly. When the stat changes come through, he thinks, he thinks they'll, yeah, because they're ugly. That's literally, like, not a meme. That's one of the main reasons they're not a lot of Zerk players. It's just they don't like ugly classes. Um, Based. He said the last point was when the, <laughs> when the stat changes come through, um, he, he's assuming there's definitely going to require and will be more balance changes following. 
because like a lot of this stuff becomes irrelevant. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I think this might be a bit of a hot take. I think they should just launch it to live servers and let us play with it worldwide, internationally, not use Korea as like some buffer ass region where like Korea is going to mm. get it first and then we're all going to like the, they're going to give feedback and then we'll get it in like three months. No, yeah. I think they need to launch it to live servers. Um, let us bitch about it and then give feedback. No one can, no one can give feedback as it stands on the global labs. We don't know. We have no idea. And I think that the only reason that like this system might work or like it, it, it's going to work is if they just launch it, they give it to everybody. Let us all test it. Let us give them their feedback. Um, and then like, they just keep updating it over time. If they only give it to KR, only KR gives feedback and they might miss something um or whatever like it's also unfair to kr to use them as the guinea pigs when all of us would like to we would all like to know what is going on i shouldn't have to sit in hugh Hotbar's stream and have him talk to me like a two-year-old um like Ooh. telling me what the <laughs> hell is going on um like i really would like the changes i don't know how do you guys like see zane you're another north american player would you rather just have uh, these changes come to live or would you rather um let them sit on global lab um i want them to i think the global release is a good idea also i like huey dewey and the way he speaks to me okay huey but listen dewey. Huey i love dewey. you that, i love you that but that every time jokes. he's like oh many l10 and we're like oh so many l10 i've never like, seen you know, a player like we're, get more excited about literally we're everything all two-year-olds it's fair but like we would like to test with the other five you know like that like the other children in the playpen you know what i mean yeah like i think a global release is a good idea but i don't think they should give it to us next week i think we should push it a little bit why to have more people test it i don't know i feel like i don't know i'm kind of scared of it i'm a little scared he's terrified to be honest he's like I'm archer might scared. not be getting buffed <laughs> is my shit cooked? i don't know am i getting railed even harder i, I couldn't tell you am, am i gonna get sucked so many times by a valkyrie that i'm gonna i'm gonna throw my mouse around the room i don't i could i don't know am i gonna be able to one combo with draconia probably not i, I don't know man I, I don't know what i want to do i'm a little scared I'm a little bit, of, a little, I'm a little bit of a pussy when it comes to this. A little scared. I mean, you play Archer, I, so that's kind know. of a given. Our chat saying you're based. Ha, ha, oh. Hashtag fanboy, I guess. There that's it what is. Translated, what you said. Yeah. Okay. I have a, I have a genuine idea though, because like I think it's better than global release, right? Like, or like global release, yes. Like if they're gonna release it, then like globally release for sure, right? Mm. But how mm -hmm. about instead they just for one week? copy the actual game files over to global app so we can use it to test it's a test server that can't be used for testing Bro, please it's take crazy. one week off of global app copy the current game files to global app and then work on it again please then we can use global app to test exactly what it's supposed to be right because then there would be 800 people from all regions right now on global app testing what's good and bad we could use global app to get a solid balance going before it gets shipped to life so we don't have four weeks of a massive bullshit yeah we have no idea what's happening like like i i Please, you have copy the game files over once i'll be honest with you as a content creator global labs is great i can just farm clips i just go into the battle arena i hit them with one skill they have 500 dp i one shot i have like 250 ap i one shot them um and i just farm clips this way it's great <laughs> um i go to pistanity every time no big deal they call me so frosty but like at the end of the day it's just not good for <laughs> testing like it's just not good for testing at all you can't you have no idea how much damage you're actually doing. So either they need to fix the damage on the global labs, which let's be honest, is not going to happen uh, like in the next week or two, or they just kind of just need to give it to us and let us play with it. Um, it's going to be a clown fiesta whenever they release it. It's going to be a clown fiesta either way. It's going to be obnoxious. But like the only way we're going to get through it is if they give it to us. And let's be honest, the game's kind of in a lull right now. Might as well give it to us now before the ball happens, because if we get mad about it, yeah. you're just the ball's going to happen and we're all going to be like, we are mad. And then Jay's going to be like, hammer. And then it, we're all going to be like, hammer. hammer. Okay, like, we're mad we're, anyways, because no, it was. Yeah, like, bro, you might as well give it to us now because we're like, again, we're like children and like the ball's going to happen and we're we have short attention spans. We'll be fine. It's like, that's just how it is. So, like, I think that they should just give it to us immediately. Waiting even a week um, is basically going to mean that the Heidel ball is going to happen, and then they're going to drop the patch, and then we're immediately going to be super upset with them. 
at least this way we're gonna be like moderately upset with them then there's gonna be like a lull or like people are gonna get kind of used to it then the ball's gonna happen everyone's gonna be super happy and then they push through the changes and then everybody's very happy stock up number up good it's a no-brainer but everyone needs to get it if you just give it to kr we are gonna be pissed I also would not trust the them to test, so. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, I, I translated your hammer right? comment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, hammer. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, like, that's, like, uh, that's just kind of how it is. I think that I think we need to get it uh, immediately. Does anybody have any closing th uh, thoughts on, like, the damage reduction, evasion changes, super armor, frontal guard changes? I think I we all agree it's a massive W with the hit reducing for servers. Mm-hmm. That's just gonna be awesome. I hope. I'm tired. Of, um, I'm tired of abilities getting sped up, and it's just so unpredictable. You can't even do anything about it. Gotta give Very positives where they are. They did good. I'm glad they did not rush it. By the way, big ups, because they could have did pre I think. That's right. Agreed. This is the first time I feel like they've actually gone through and did every aspect of of a system. Now I re but I really hope they do a balance patch now this week or next week and then push it globally. Like that's like bro, it is so fun to find like some broken bullshit stuff when it comes out, but it's not fun when you watch other people do it and then it gets nerfed on their server and you never get to f play with it. You know, mm -hmm. that's uh, <laughs> I'm keeping it a buck. Like I have fun doing that, but like it, I don't know. I really am hoping for a balance patch because like. It's gonna be the same meta. Like... Oh, oh, uh, share something. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not only damage reduction, evasion changes. Mm -hmm. Hits also reducing the skills. This is big win. I did some tests, and I just shocked. And I didn't expect that. Let me just read my test. During my global test of combo skills, I noticed that the skill cancels were smoother. It's not only me. I also asked other testers in the global lab. They also said the same thing. To determine if this situation was placebo for me, I conducted a test with a combo consisting of more than 10 skills. I observed that due to the decrease in hits within the skill, the same combo came out approximately 4 to 5% faster. I believe this situation will likely apply to all classes. A low number of hits seems to result in less stutter and a faster skill transition. While the difference is not that much big, I think that even though it may be felt a small extent, it will probably satisfy every player in the game. This is big. Yeah, yeah so I think you... the KR has mentioned that too, though. There's going to be less lag with that. Okay, so your combos are happening faster. Interesting. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Overall, it increases the APM. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you can just uh that's probably okay <laughs> um yeah guardians are like what the hell man they actually have to cast more skills more frequently um okay i don't uh, think this affects guardian <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guardian what's a combo bro we just throw out three skills and on shift F, boy. Mm -hmm. technically a combo uh all right anybody any closing mm. thoughts that they want to add uh before we wrap things yeah. up here Yambiam had a mm -hmm. quick one. Is it since uh, DR is getting a uh, bonus? He thinks that AP needs some bonus too for the balance moving forward. Other than that, he has not much to say, he says. Oh, I'm actually curious. That was his last uh, comment. Okay. Uh, I think we will get extra um, AP at Skull Fan Ball. I was from yeah. the. Fallen God weapons? Fallen God weapons, anyone? Yeah. FG weapons, yeah. anyone? Fallen God weapons. Yeah. Probably. yeah. No, I think he meant it more like proper AP caps because right now the majority of build goes like maybe 316 AP and then full accuracy afterwards because the next AP brackets after like 316 or maybe 323, right? Bro, there's no way you're going for the 330 AP cap. It's total grief. Like, it's mm. pointless, bro. You get 2 AP or some shit. It's so dog shit. Like, oh, you, said, you just yeah. stack like the 316, 323 maybe and then the rest you just go full accuracy because any point in AP afterwards is mm. just wasted. So uh, I think he meant it more like this because with the new DR yeah, chain. Yeah, right? you're right. Because he just had another line talking about the brackets. He said, uh, like, the three, after 309 AP, the brackets just aren't that meaningful, he feels. Oh. Yeah. Hybrid works because you can get 309 AP on 470 DP or some shit right now. Well, the thing is, um, 
I think they're trying to make everybody tankier, so adding AP is counterintuitive in this case. Uh, but no, he I wrote it yeah, down. he just meant they need to do something, is what he wrote, kind of vaguely, like something about the AP that would yeah. present a problem, he thinks. So this is also the yeah. lower brackets and add some of yeah. that AP to the higher brackets, right? So that you have to specify, do I want to do damage or be tanky, right? So you don't mm. have the option of, hey, I'm going to go through on an AP, get like 99% of the AP that the other players have, and then stack 470 DP on top. So like uh, maybe you know, remove right, some yeah. AP from the lower brackets and add them to the higher brackets. Okay. I just want to point out something real quick. This all reminds me of a lot of like, the, it's whether it be healthy for the game or not. Um, when if we have a DP or like a tank meta, it's uh, it means gear matters a lot, like a lot, right? So for people trying to like get into uncapped PVP. Like this tank meta is gonna be it's it's gonna go back to being a lot harder to get into. Right. Um I just yeah, I just wanna make make a point that out a little yep. bit because that's kind of I don't think it's healthy per se, because I would like more people to play uncapped PvP, but you know, like we do need a meta change, but I don't know if adding just straight more stats to the game, like more DR, more AP, more more need to grind random gear pieces. I don't know if that's like the solution to all this, but well, yeah, I, I do want a meta change, right? I just want to like keep in mind this means it's going to be harder for people. That means like my my Asia account, like I'm probably going to have to grind. I don't know, like a shitload more gear now, like just to be competitive on uncapped. Yeah, like, I'm. I'm curious what you guys think of like essentially if you guys remember I don't know if you guys were around but there was used to be a system in the game called Renown um and that system failed miserably essentially it gave you much more tankiness for just having gear score it gave you just damage reduction for just having gear score and essentially what they've introduced on the global labs is kind of a a watered down version of Renown in this case so you're getting DR the more DP you have the more DR that you get um I think Renown might actually work nowadays because, like, I don't know, just because of how the game works, it's just, it might actually work, but, like, are you guys okay with adding just, like, more DR at every single level? Um, or does it make DR too strong over your over evasion, you think? I'm getting one-shot regardless. Well, but can think... you still one-shot others? I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm a femboy, like, paper glass, I don't know. I think it's cool. Sure. I don't. I. I mean. I know a lot of people complain about me killing out of render. I. I think me doing a couple other skills cool. I guess. I don't really mind it. I'm excited for the tanking meta. I hope it's to me like exciting, kind of like how the new nervous system is for me. <laughs> Just excited new change. Fucking blue. <laughs> yeah. Um. I think classes that don't have good base or passives or like, um, class mods, uh, rather, are kind of a bit. I'm gonna keep it a buck. This is the other thing I'm kind of concerned about. If your class doesn't scale well with DP, and you just gotta like, it's just a theory, right? But if you got your class mod nerfed and your class doesn't really scale with DP, like I'm keeping a buck. I go, I've tried like speaking from Lan and DK for for example, right? These two classes, I've tried them at like 500 to 600 DR, and you pretty much get two tapped. It's you're not really that tanky. So getting another ADDR, like you're gonna you gonna feel a little bit better, like but you're still dying pretty quick. So I don't know. Okay. That's why I said I just want a balance batch before this goes live, to be honest. Like I think that could fix a lot of things. Uh personally. Yeah, we'll see. Uh any final thoughts from everybody? Oh. Okay. I I, okay, I would agree with with him, so Thing of like, hey, yeah, gear is gonna matter more, and I don't know how good that is. Yeah. On the other hand, though, I feel like a lot of people that are like at the one or two devil mark, maybe or something. Why would you currently push for the third devil or your last armor or something? Ninety percent of the content in the game is kept. The the last bit of unkept content right now is kind of dead, right? So like, you don't really have a reason to push for your last four, five, six, seven, eight, nine gear score, right? So, well, it, maybe it incentivizes getting the gear a bit more again, right? I'm the one that's down it, tremendous. Like I'm the one that's down tremendous on this because now all my gear help and shit, bro, I got to throw all this crap out the window. I got to start back over. I got to like, 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 I, now I got to, 
Now I gotta redo all my gear guides. I gotta redo all my gear help. I gotta rethink every everything. It's gonna be a nightmare. But also I'm gonna farm content. Oh, oh, oh poor hey, you. Yeah, more content, easy. It's this kind of goes into the similar thing. But like, what do we feel about the uh, HP cap on Valencia and Medea? I love that being 8K now. Love it. I I, I say if you don't like the HP cap on uh, Valencia Medea, suck it, pussy. Go to uncapped. That's my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Like you, you we, shouldn't be do you there. Think that should be, do, do you think that should be expanded to siege as well? Because like, I feel like it's going to be more of a problem. Like imagine killing a 12, yes. 13 K HP striker 100%. with 25% DR. Yes. That's a, that's, that's what I'm worried about. Yeah. You know? No Absolutely. Kaias, no chi Chimeras. Yep. <laughs> I think that, yeah, I think Chimeras and Kaias being removed from the game is a huge win. So like big W's there. And I, I think that, Honestly, the people that gave that feedback were the people on this podcast the last time. I think it was Yum Yum, um, which suggested it. Um, and it looks like they did actually hear it. And it looks like it is getting removed from the game, which is huge. And they're also looking at potentially removing like Elixir stuff as well, um, which is great. I think it's an objective win because, again, it helps standardize the gear score so that you don't have like it's supposed to be capped gear, man. Things are supposed to be equal. I like it. I think it's a win. I think the capping the HP is also a win. If you want uncapped HP, go to uncapped. You know what I mean? Uh, you guys ready for tongue grab meta? Stop. Stop. That's it. That's the that's move. Stop. To be honest. That's it. Do you see what they say? Change the Z buff to, right? Yeah, dude. Tongue grab meta is going to be it. Yeah, if HP is capped, that means it doesn't matter. We should get the attack speed. Dude, no, go. it's attack speed is only 25%. No, they nerfed it. That's so good. Better than nothing. It's that's the same as E. It's the no, same, same as your hundred percent. Do you just have it more often? That is a noob trap. Mm. Just a noob trap. Just a delusion. Tungra said is shit. Unless they make so, the two hundreds like each class is two hundred, really crazy. Then I think Tungra's a bad. I'll be honest. I oh, thought the fools are two hundred, bro. That's no, no, like no. from here. That's All you do. <laughs> Stop. No, I saw that shit. Stop. <laughs> All you do is the like you just have like the two the artifacts right the artifacts that increase rage with like a three tongue grad set is fine. Uh, I don't think that you need to put on the earrings. I think no, you but if, just... if you run the the set on on cap, you agree, thing, bro. If you don't run siege evasion like on cap, eh, what you doing, bro? Like, <laughs> what you, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's you ain't wrong about that, I guess. Um, uh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I had a question if the, if you don't mind. But yeah, please. Yeah, if you, you good? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, he wanted to ask you all about the 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 tongue rat set effects. All oh. his opinion about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I give my thoughts on it first. I'll be honest. Yeah. I think adding the tongue rat AP bonus. Uh, who asked? Yeah. <laughs> like that's bro. Like this is a really old set of gear. This would be like adding more monster damage and monster damage to a Uria set. Or to like a green weapon set, like like no one asked for this. Mm. I don't understand why they're buffing that aspect of the tongue rats. I do think that if they were gonna buff tongue rats, I think it should have just been objectively, yeah, the percent black spirit rage that you get is higher, mm. right? Um, on each tongue rat accessory, that should have probably been the way that they went about it. But like adding adding like the hidden AP is completely irrelevant because distortion earrings are a thing, in my opinion. But I'm curious what everybody else thinks about it. Jason, what do you think about it? I think the AP is useless, the yeah. 200 like, percent thingy goes in a bit different direction with like the new crit rate that you get instead, which is a bit weird, but that's a different topic, I guess. Okay, uh, season. Um, I think it's silly. That's yeah. pretty much all I gotta say about it. I, I think I'm gonna use it in cap content, just for extra 100s and 25 percent, but to have more up consistently, but that's pretty much it. Right to hold two hundreds, I guess. Or uh, I mean, I guess you could maybe feed more. The, maybe that's the place. Yeah, you could feed maybe more. I guess. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not, Archer two hundred is terrible. So yeah. Well, I mean, no, they're supposed will, to like, rework them. Every two hundred, <laughs> outside of like five classes, three classes, that's bad. Yeah. Oh my God! Somebody in chat said, "Right, but this will increase my trash per mm -hmm. hour since I can start off with a two hundred percent spin with twelve AP <laughs> and swap to a sip six Devo set." <laughs> Holy shit, this dude Code. spent like this dude he's spent like on oh, god he spent hey, six hundred billion hey. silver so that he could like kill an extra pack an hour. That's don't insane. Don't let Looney hear about that one. 
That's Bro, crazy. he's the type of person to snipe on my floor for 20, for 20 AP instead of actually getting a good fight on Medaya to get 15 AP, bro. That's insane. <laughs> he, he gets farmed for 40 minutes for 5 AP more. Dude, he's cooking. <laughs> he's cooking, cook. bro. He's cooking, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ham, what are your thoughts on it? Do you think that hidden AP is basically useless? Or do you I like think he's it? just gonna get divos. If, if, uh, if, we, if we have a billion DR in the game, like how DR works at least, uh, you want more AP, so like I think he's just gonna get divers. <laughs> uh, and I think like unless they like, turbo buff the hundred, the two hundred percent to be like crazy, but then you might as well just feed the two hundred. So I don't know. I think it's kind of a bait. Um. Now, what does Yum Yum think about it? Oh, I'm sorry, Kendaya. Mm. I apologize. Mm. Yeah. So I think uh, first we have to understand that uh, between Devil set or achieving Devil and achieving Tungrat, the gap is not that much big. PA just made this game is extremely easy. There is no like hard items to get. Maybe Tungrat re Devil rings in these days, but who cares? It's not that much big uh, efficiency when you have it. So overall, uh, we have to consider that what they changed on 100 person what they changed on 200 person on 200 person they added 30 percent crit rate and the remain stats are the same for 200 person they increased the ap for five okay they didn't change the attack speed buff it's still that they sorry they nerfed the attack speed buff if they just keep it the 40 percent then it would be acceptable for cap the cap zone and for others for other parts because the attack speed is the one of the biggest uh, aggressive stats that you can use at the cap zones, but overall, it is same sharing the same attack speed with 100 percent. So what they added extra 2k HP and 50 percent crit rate. 50 percent crit rate is big. No one needs that. So overall, this makes the Tungrat set is shit. It's totally useless. It's totally noob trap. People may think that hey, I will just do the 200. I will just do better trash rate per hour. I'll just do the I will get that and but if you want to use that stats in uncapped that's the only way that you can use in uncapped tungrat set is shit because you need the setups because you're gonna fight against veteran players if you use the tungrat, tungrat sets they're gonna destroy you they're gonna destroy you because they, they will have full pen devil set full pen and other accessories they have full uh different things different setups that's why but 12 ap dude who cares 12 ap Whatever you just try to just get extra AP, everybody, AP is easy stuff in this game to get. Like, tw if you ask me what they should do, just keep the Tungra set like that. Maybe newbies uh, can use, maybe they can accept it okay -ish, but let's, I mean, if PA actually listen to this, please add six set effects to the Debarekas 20% BSR, okay? So we will be able to get. X tiny bit DSR, BSR from Devoreka setups. If you use six double, you have zero BSR additional. You do not have uh, extra time to keep your 100 person or something. That's what I'm thinking. Tungrat is shit. Yeah, Tungrat is complete garbage. Um, I have been a like for real. Real. Yeah. Uh, well, hold on. Let Yam Yam um, speak on the, the Tungrat real quick. Yeah. Okay, so he says. Um, Honestly, he doesn't know why the Tungrat bonus is even being added in the first place. In the end, he thinks even if you have the five, if you have five pen Tungrads, you still need to move on to double set in the end. You know, end game. He doesn't see the point. He says when he's streaming in Korea, he sees a lot of people recommend. Oh, doggy! <gasps> oh, so cute! Oh my gosh, look at those eyes. Yeah. Those little eyebrows. Yeah. Those little eyebrows. Okay, sorry. He yeah. Does have so he said, um. Yeah, so the last point was uh, when streaming in Korea, he sees some people recommending Tungrats to newbies, and he really wants to tell them to... Uh, he said it with lightning nicely, but Tilda, he wants them to shut up, basically. He thinks there's no future for the Tungrat set. Yeah. That was uh, his opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, right on. Okay, so Jason, what's your uh, question for uh, Yum Yum? What do they think about the like crit rate from the, from the new Absorb? Because I think an A and the U players basically agreed that it's kind of throws off the balance a little bit because certain classes are balanced around having 100% and certain classes are balanced around not having 100% what does KR think about it? Uh, oh, you guys as well, maybe if you have different opinions Crit rate for what? Like, the, you mean on the, the GDAB? Oh. They added it to the to the absorb, no? They, they get crit rate to absorb, no? Yeah, the... the uh, is it, is, does the 100% have it too? I know the 200 did 
Yeah, they're standardizing it across Wait, the board. Was added? Wait, I was yeah, they gave it crit, what right? happened? but most classes have arms and crit. Like, bar, like, a few. Okay. Yeah, but um, it, like, personally, it completely invalidates Shy Absorb, which is already only useful for, like, half the classes, right? Like, half the classes already only benefit from it, and it still gets used. And with that one, I guess it's completely invalidated. And certain classes are just balanced around not having it, and for the, for the rest, it's useless, right? For the people that have 100% crit rate anyways, it's useless. Okay. But for the people that don't have it, well, they're not supposed to have it. <laughs> okay, so what's Yum Yum say about it? Yeah, so, so what was the specific question again? One more time. Sorry. They added crit the, rate to yep. mm -hmm. the Z absorb. What, what's their opinion on it? Crit rate to Z absorption? Yeah, to the Black Spirit the range. BSR absorption, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yes. Oh, Yum Yum Nim. Yeah. 그 BSR 100% 채워지면은 Z 키로 그 그냥 흡수할 수 있잖아요 버프로. 그래 맞아 맞아. 거기에 치명타 확률을 추가된 게 어, 아, 추가된 걸 어떻게 생각하는지? Z 버튼 Z 키로. 아 네. 치명타 흡수에 네. 추가된 거. 네네. 저는 그, 그 솔직히 왜 했나 싶긴 한데 특정 직업만. 네. 사용하는 게 아니 이제 대부분의 클래스는 네. 치명타 확률이 요즘 필요 없잖아요. 대부분 자체적으로 네. 기술 특화 에드온이라던가 자체 스킬 버프로 100%를 맞출 수 있고 몇몇 직업만 필요했던 게 치명타 확률인데 네. 약간 그런 직업들을 위해 그러, 그런 직업들을 상향시켜 주기 위해 추가한 게 아닌가 싶어요. 저는 왜 굳이 추가된지는 네. 잘 모르겠어요. Okay, so he's basically saying that he doesn't he really doesn't know why. He's just under the assumption that it's basically just for specific classes that don't get to, you know, build a crit rate. Because, you know, a lot of most classes already, we have enough crit rate, 100%. So he says he thinks, he's assuming maybe the only reason they're introducing is literally just for the couple classes or a few classes that are kind of lacking in that. And that's the only reason he can justify it being into the game, put into the game. Yep, that was his opinion. Okay, all right. Uh, mm -hmm. Does Yum Yum have any uh, questions for us? Uh, or any more questions for us? Yeah. 혹시 추가로 또 질문 있으신가요, 양병님? 아니요, 저는 없습니다. Okay. He says nope. Thank you. Okay. Uh, gracias. Wait. Can uh, I yep. ask a question? Uh huh. Um, would we? How do we feel if they change tongue red to give a BSR like BSR rage or like BSR or like shy buff, but not obviously not as absurd as shy buffs, but like. Give you mm. generate more BSR instead of like actually just giving you more BSR thing. Like I feel like it could like change a lot, but maybe just make the default two hundred and then uh, tongue red set increases your BSR regen. Like AOE settings, but like nowhere near oh, as Vaga, absurd. Vagabond, yeah. Aren't we at that point back to the same base idea of chimeras and kayas where if you have higher gear yeah. you're gonna benefit from being able to equip lower accessories like tongue red? Yeah. And then mm -hmm. you gain a benefit from it, which you're not supposed to have. It, it, it's like budget it's broken, chimera. Right? Right? It, it would just be broken, no? Yeah. I, I think you can't make it because you remove chimera arguing we don't want higher gear players to have an advantage over lower gear players on a kept scenario yeah, because true. they gain same, stats that you can't otherwise. Problem. And now if you make that to tongue red, you gain stats that you that other players can't get, right? Like it's the same yeah. issue, no? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Anything to add before we wrap it up? Okay. Uh, this has been the United Nations podcast um, for Black Desert. We do this like once a month or so. Uh, we try to get everyone together. Mm -hmm. I want to thank everybody uh, for coming out to the oh, podcast. Wow. Uh, it definitely means a lot to the entire community that we have a lot of people show up for it. Hopefully at some point we can get um, kind of Russia, uh, Japan, and maybe South America if we can find a creator that can kind of make the time. Uh, it's tough because it is international, so you need people that are willing to work with. You know, it's like 4 o'clock in the morning my time right now, but, you know, I'm, I'm willing to do it because I think that it's it's really healthy for the community. Um, but, like, I want to thank uh, Yam Yam especially uh, for coming and talking uh, with Korea, hopefully, honestly, if we could get more creators mm -hmm. like Yam Yam uh, in here, maybe we get Hugh in here um, or mm -hmm. some of the other uh, KR folks. Uh, sadly, they're no longer on Twitch anymore. Um, but uh, we can give it, go ahead and give him shout outs. Um, if he's in my chat, I can give him a shout out. Uh, yeah, 
he's not in my chat right now. Um, but uh, I'll go ahead and give everyone shout outs. Mm. Bro Bear, thank you so much for translating, oh, man. We absolutely you. need oh. you to be able to translate Korean uh, like this. Uh, guys, you guys need to go give Bro Bear a follow um, over at Bro Bear TV. Uh, over there, he plays Black Desert on the North American server uh, and has a lot of fun with it. I saw him in Nodeworth uh, this evening. Uh, actually, right, you were standing in Velia. Uh, what uh, what guild yeah. were you in? I was in uh, Noms. Oh, a, a yeah, yeah, you guys were having month. fun. Yeah. Yeah, you guys yeah, were, were having, having fun. fun. Yeah. 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 Um, and then we have Jason representing EU. So, champion Jason. Uh, honestly, Bro Bear, you want to give yourself a shout out real quick? Sorry, I'm kind of going down the line here. Oh, yeah. No, I'm good. I'm just translating. I'm having fun. I always like to be listening into the conversation. I'm like a viewer, and I'm just translating as needed. Yeah, it's just fun. Fun times. Yeah, right on. Um, mm -hmm. And then we have Jason uh, on EU. You want to give yourself a shout out real quick? If you want to see uh, me vacuuming or painting a picture in Note Wars Future, if they're boring, make sure to stay around, boys. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, Dirty big fan. Player. You you've been eating on that content lately. You've been you've been kind of going in. Right, it's the best patch PA ever brought out for me. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, okay, then C Zane. Um, my name is C Zane. I play Archer. I'm the type of fella who likes killing people in game. That's why I have so much fun every nowhere. If you want to come check out my nowhere streams or whatever, come come hang out, man. Um, the silly squad is in here. Uh, if you guys look at the, you guys probably saw all the boob emotes on chat screen. Uh, Blue squad was looking at the entire time. That, that's, those are from the courtesy of the silly squad. So you're welcome. Thanks, thanks for having me on this. This was awesome. I didn't get to see any boob emotes. <laughs> uh, there, there was a there was a ton. Uh. All right, gotcha. Um, uh, Ham, you want to give yourself a shout out as well? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Um, I'm Ham. Uh, yeah, I stream Node Wars whenever there's content. Um, at it. Yeah. Yeah. That's that. That's it. Yeah. Um, sums it up. Okay, right I play, on. I play a lot of classes. Yeah, he plays a lot Mostly of classes, lot. and he's a super gamer at each. So each one of them, I promise. Um. And I promise he's uh, he's probably a weeb. I mean, look at his profile picture. It is he's one of us. I get it. Are you playing Weathering Waves, Ham? Uh, no, I don't have time. I got too many assignments going. In. Oh, okay, well, uh, hopefully school wraps up soon. Uh, our boy can die. Can give yourself a shout out here. Yeah, I mean, thanks for having me. And I also want to add this thing. In the previous United Nations podcasts, like we talked about many things and some of them that I'm very happy to see that they have taken into consideration my suggestions to reduce the number of participants. We directly see this. We talked about that blue, you remember? We mm -hmm. directly see this right in the after global lab patch. I was just shocked. I didn't know that they actually care what, what we think. And uh, they ha adding the HP uh, caps for Medea Valencia region, we also talked about that. And now we're seeing that it's because it is impossible to win against 13, uh, 14k HP pool for that AP cap. And also, hopefully they will do that for Siege too, because in Siege there are uh, stat caps, but there's no HP caps. Hopefully they can do that too. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I want to reverberate that sentiment a little bit. It does feel that this is some of the content that we get to make that uh, they actually listen to uh, and the feedback that we get to, um, like the developers watch it, they read the chats, everyone gets to have a say, we run polls and stuff. So it's the entire community, not just the creators brought onto the podcast, but everyone kind of gets to give uh, their feedback and the developers get to read the chats and stuff. It does seem that they are listening to this kind of, this format of content, even though it might be a little overwhelming for some people. Um, I do, yeah, big shout out for them at least listening to mm. uh, at least this form of content has been great. Uh, and then if Yambiam wants to give himself a shout out, I don't actually have Yambiam's mm. Twitch link. I don't think he's live on Twitch right now. Uh, I don't no, see him. Yambiam is now on Twitch. But I can... Uh, yeah. 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 So they apparently it's a new Korean gaming streaming site. They don't allow multi-streaming multi anymore streaming anymore yeah oh my god so he used to do twitch at the same time but now he can't bro they're just locking it down man yeah that sucks sure though. well i linked his uh, is, even if you wanted YouTube. to watch him on the website Chijik, it's so laggy like you can't watch it. i can't watch the korean content creators right now it's so so laggy they don't even support uh what is it international broadcasting it's so laggy 
Yeah, well, I did link his YouTube at least. Yeah. Uh, in the chat there. Yeah. Kind of scummy that they they don't allow multi streaming because they saw. I guess they saw like the yeah. Korean streamers had like a, a VPN and they were just multi streaming to Twitch uh, and on their platform there. But like, I don't really yeah. feel like they were losing too much traffic and then they just, yeah. You know, um, if that anything, really sucks. they might have lost traffic by stopping them from dual streaming because they. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, it yeah. really sucks. Well, uh, okay. Well, from anyway, for all of us here at the United Nations podcast, guys, remember to leave comments on the video. Uh, leave your feedback uh, down below the video. If you weren't able to make the podcast live, uh, leaving your feedback back is extremely important because it shows uh, the developers in Pearl Abyss um, who definitely are looking at content like this, uh, what you guys kind of think about the system. So upvote comments, interact with the video uh, is extremely important there. So uh, from all of us at the United Nations mm -hmm. podcast, have a great rest of your month, guys.